This is propaganda live. I only suggest how to think and how to vote. <laughs> An extraordinary cultural moment, already iconic, already iconic. We love you, you're welcome here. Where did this guy come from? And it's like he's been doing it for ages, he's very confident. Plainly, and this is a matter now of fact and record, I'm right wing. I feel that Christ may have had a better vision. Is this misinformation or is Vivek Ramaswamy in the lavatory? That's a sort of like a poem, is this Eminem? Man, if we didn't come together in that stream. I'm assuming it was just the P. Now, these are the kind of conversations I think that the legacy media can no longer compete with. Win, 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 win. This is On Brand, a podcast where we discuss the ideas and antics of one Russell Brand. I'm Al Worth, and each week I go through an episode of Brand Show with my co-host Lauren B. That's me, I'm Lauren B, and I'm the host that has no idea what we are getting into today, but it's usually bad. It's almost invariably bad, which is why we do the good thing before the bad thing. And Lauren, what is your good thing before the bad thing this week? Oh, let's see. So, um. <laughs> Be since it's spooky season it's getting very close to the the witching day of the witching hour mm -hmm. um very fun so we've been watching um the 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 appropriate films for this mm -hmm. month and um we i had never seen the long form like tv movie version i guess of like it was like a series i think of salem's lot and mm. um and let's see, I mean, Poltergeist and like, obviously like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, I have a confession I'm very surprised about, like hmm. very surprised about. Okay. Oh, I think Toby Hooper, like this, this feels like cringe, like this feels cringe to say, because hmm. he's a horror movie director mainly, not exclusively, but mainly. Hmm. Um, I think that Toby Hooper is one of my favorite directors. Hmm. And that's weird. There was like a long time where I was like too highfalutin for me caring about horror movies. And I was disabused of that notion whenever I started this, you know, I started dating Mike and I was like, oh, wait, these are really good and fun. And there's it's fun to talk about, you know, like the the there's a whole other side of horror. I wasn't really giving it a fair shake. It was like, I, I like the good mm. ones, but mm, oh, I was, you know, kind of like right, cranky right, about right. the rest of them. Right. Um, so it's a weird feeling to come out as being a Toby Hooper, like a big Toby Hooper fan. But like <laughs> the man just makes, makes compelling things that I like. It's, yeah, no, that's just, fair. That's entirely fair. It's yeah. a weird thing to learn about myself this, this late in the game. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's fun. That's great. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's very strange. I'm like getting used to this new identity for myself like, oh, <laughs> as a toby is, i've learned fan. this about myself <laughs> yeah like <laughs> see everybody... we, we, we're learning all these things i've gotten into baseball you've gotten into toby hooper right we, it's we're, it's... <laughs> it's like i didn't know i i didn't know i was into what i didn't i i was like i'm like i'm here for what he's serving and i just didn't know and now yeah. i do and i recommend highly if you haven't seen the old salem's lot if you like the new one, that's great. I <laughs> don't. There's well, because the reason that this, the old one was being like recommended in our algorithms a lot is because there's like a new version. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's in theaters now, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's on Max, so like, oh, right, uh, okay. yeah. it, I think I don't know if it was also in theaters, but it was in, it was on Max, and so like. <sighs> I'm so glad you get more stuff to enjoy if that's your cup of tea. I couldn't make it through the first. I think we made it maybe 15 minutes and we're like, mm, nope. Um, and mm, mm. and so if if maybe if you are not inclined to like new remakes, I'm going to save you some effort. Um, <laughs> but if you like it, that's great. Um this, if you like it, that's great. Um, but watching the old one, fuck, it was so good. It looks so good. Oh my, ugh, ugh, ugh. It was, it, um, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I, uh, I, I, I've been on this journey with really liking horror movies and enjoying the art of it all. And so it's like, mm. you know, mm. but also being, being scared and grossed out is also very fun. Um, it is. Yeah. It's not, it can be both like highbrow and lowbrow is kind of my, my steez. So, uh, yeah. 
Very David, cool. Toby Hooper. Hello. Yeah. Who knew? Anyway. <laughs> Super cool. What's your good thing? My good thing is um <clears throat> so do you know the Warriors? Um oh, yeah. pretty, right, right to play uh, EA. Uh -huh. I assumed you would. Um <laughs> right, so from from yes. the movie. Um there was also a PS2 game, which is how I was introduced to it. Um, and the game was fantastic. Um uh, for for anyone who doesn't know, they, vague kind of plot summary. There's a gang called the Warriors, they're framed for a crime they didn't commit, basically, and they have to make their way home across New York through a bunch of other gangs' territories who are all looking to kill them. All of them are wearing kind of very um uh very interesting outfits, a little a little bit campy, a little bit cartoonish. It's a lot of fun. Um anyway. <laughs> Um, in in what is probably the uh, one of the least necessary pieces of art of all time, um, Lin Manuel Miranda and Issa Davis, who is a, a, a black female playwright and activist, um, they've they've made a concept album based on the Warriors, um, and it's fantastic. Um, it features cameos from RZA, Busta Rhymes, Nas, Ghostface Killer, and Ms. Lauren Hill. Um, but like. There were a lot of elements about it that really surprised me. Um, it's like they've made it so many times more diverse. Um, it's much queerer. Um, there, there are more non. Four? I know. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, like they're they're they're. I mean, overtly not queer. Yes. Covertly. Yeah. Very yes, exactly. But no, life this, is this a cabaret, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> This is much more overt. Um, there are non-binary people. It's musically diverse. There's there's Latin music, K-pop. There's metal. There's all sorts going on, as well as hip hop and pop and everything else. Um, they gender swapped the main gang, like the Warriors. So it's 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 all black and Asian women now, um, which which is great. And that has three effects, right? One, the gender of the love interest isn't changed, so it becomes a queer love story between Swan and Mercy, which I'm like, fantastic, great. Um, and like in the original one, one of the Warriors is is basically a rapist who gets arrested for trying to force himself on a woman, which is a bleak moment in the film. Um, and, and, and I don't think anyone's sorry to see him get arrested. Um, however, in this version, um, the character Ajax, who is obviously now a woman, confronts a predator being a creep towards her, who then turns out to be an undercover cop. So it's essentially the NYPD entrapping a young black woman. And, and that's... Um, and uh, thirdly, and this was a moment of personal joy that I think you might appreciate, one of the gangs um, are fairly obviously queer and flamboyant like gang on roller skates, um, and the leader is played by Billy Porter, um, who just spends an entire verse roasting them all on their outfits. And I was like, this is delightful. This is fantastic. Sure. Uh, <laughs> sure. But yeah, in short, um, really great album. Really fun. Completely unnecessary, but really great. Um, so wait, album not okay. So yeah, no, it's it's not associated to any visual media. I don't think there okay. are any plans for that at all. It's it's just an album, um, which is the very interesting in of itself. Um, sure. <laughs> but no, it's it's really good, and I've I've really enjoyed it. Um, so yes, yes, uh, that, that's that. what I've I've seen some things popping around with. Okay, all right, mm. that's what that is. All right, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, apparently Lin Manuel Miranda saw the movie when he was four, and um, it had a it had an effect. And I'm like, yep, that's too young to see that movie. Um, I would not. Well, be it's sure inescapable. If... That was. Yeah. We just yeah, rewatched yeah. Gremlins, and I was like, I watched uh, this as a child. Yeah. A child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The amount. <laughs> Of puppets shooting real guns. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the gun count is so high. I yeah. was like, whoa. See, see, fun fun fact about they Gremlins. They showed us crazy shit for real. <laughs> fun fact about Gremlins for me. I hadn't seen the original Gremlins until I was in my mid-20s, but I saw Gremlins 2 when I was about nine. Yeah. Um, which is like the one of the weirdest films ever made so fantastic in so many ways but so bizarre um and yeah it was definitely still still too young for that movie it's so uh, violent it's so, it's so violent it's, and so like much. so dark and mm. it just i get that also that they were doing cartoon violence but like it's it really doesn't come across that way like yes yeah 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 which is kind of awesome i don't know it's kind of oh. awesome i'm not mad about honestly i'm not mad but i could not sleep for i mean that was like nightmare fuel when i was a kid yeah that's yeah, yeah. fair yeah. The, the, yeah. The, and the effects in those movies are effective um as well you yeah. know it's, it's yeah Gross. yeah com completely really <laughs> Great. anyway really anyway weird. um yeah really enjoyed they showed the us insane shit yeah 
Right, right. Yes, yes, they did. Inappropriate. Yes, they did. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that that has led to the, this album coming out, gotcha. um, which which hey, really fun. Anyway, we have got a show to do. Uh, but first, let's uh, let's thank a patron. This time, not a new patron, but someone who has upped their pledge. Um, so, Scorpion the Bird, you are still an awakening wonder. You are indeed an awakening wonder. Thank you, Scorp. Thanks, Scorp. Thank you. Much thank you. appreciated. And uh, give that bird a cuddle for us, because it is, in fact, a bird named Scorpion. Um, what a good bird. Um, if you do enjoy the show, please leave us a five-star review wherever you're listening, and please do share us with your friends, loved ones, or anyone you think might enjoy this project of ours. It would be hugely appreciated and goes to great lengths in helping us continue. And if you want to support us financially in what we do, become an Awakening Wonder, join the Invisible Hand, or donate on an elevated tier, head to patreon.com slash onbrand, and you will have our eternal gratitude. It is this which allows us to be editorially independent and ad-free. And as a patron, you will also get a shout-out on the show and access to our patron-only after-show, Off-Brand. And this week, we took a little look at Russell's local channel um specifically dissecting a bible reading a meditation some q and a's he did with his audience and his final stand-up comedy breakdown in which he covered his own stand-up comedy from 2013 um the whole thing was revealing in a number of ways <laughs> don't show me a better movie in your movie <laughs> That's, don't yeah. show me a better movie in your movie i'll stop watching your movie and go watch that movie god don't damn remind me of content that's better than your content <laughs> in the middle of your content yeah yeah it's it's worse when it's your own content that is better than your own current content yeah. like, oh boy the long uh, explanation of that i feel like you can <laughs> fill in the blanks yep but yep. that is that has been like I that I have been harping on this idea for about I'd say two ish years now. I've been just like seeing like I can't deal with this. I mean Salem's Lot. That's what happened. We're like we're watching this remake. I'm like uh, maybe could we just watch the first one? Uh, yeah, because yeah, <laughs> there's like yeah. another one that I haven't seen yet, and like maybe let's just do that. Yeah, yeah, and, and you are you are confronted but you get the with long the question. Version. Yeah, yeah you're confronted you get the long with the question of like. Brand. Okay. Why, why, why would I watch current Russell when 2013 Russell is clearly better? Um, yeah, you know, like it's still, still issues, but clearly better. Um, sure, sure, <laughs> but yeah, that. So the long version is an off-brand, but yes, the short yeah, version yeah. that I'm sure you can at least understand uh, is like, don't show a better movie in your movie. No, no, uh, don't. but hey. We, uh, we, we had a lot of fun with it. Um, so head to patreon.com slash onbrand to check out that and the many, many hours of content up there. And please note that while you can easily listen to our audio version anywhere you can find podcasts, you can also watch us on YouTube. Or if you're listening to the Spotify app, the video will come up there too. Now, um, I mentioned those things that we covered in the off-brand specifically because they're the final ones, right? Um, Russell is revamping the Locals channel and getting rid of the Q&As, getting rid of the Bible readings, and getting rid of the stand-up comedy breakdowns. Um, the meditations are staying, but the rest of it is all going. Um, and I mentioned I knew some of what would be replacing all of that stuff, and that is what we'll be taking a look at today. Um, what we're going to look at is a Locals exclusive piece of content. Um, so I'll take this moment to remind everyone that Russell has invited journalists to go behind the paywall of the Locals channel to look at the content there. And uh, we might not be journalists, but probably close enough for this bullshit. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> we're not journalists. End of thought. We're, no, we're but definitely we're, not journalists. But, but We're enthusiasts but, and lookers. Yep. Yes, indeed. Um, before we take a look at that, however, um, I wanted to highlight something else that's appeared on Russell's Locals channel, which is a goal of how many members they're aiming for with a percentage count of how far they've gotten. Um, so the, the current goal is to reach 10,000 members and they're supposedly at 73%, which means Russell has roughly 7,300 members of his Locals channel, each paying a minimum of $60 a year. Um, the monthly payment is a couple of dollars a month more expensive, so that's a variable. Uh, but based on the minimum, Russell is currently earning at least $438,000 a year from the Locals channel alone, um, likely close to two half a million dollars uh, given some of those users must be paying monthly um and then you know you you, you factor in advertising payouts uh, affiliate deals whatever deal he has with rumble who knows about that one and live events where he's getting paid an absolute fortune so to speak um and uh, and uh, his annual income quickly escalates into the millions um without even factoring in potential outside funding from mysterious unknown sources um yeah or... that's what i'm <laughs> i'm hearing so, uh, mm. yeah yeah yeah, or, or even like the more legitimate forms of income that he'll have, like residuals he'll be getting from acting gigs over the years. You know, I'm, I'm sure he still gets minions money and that side of things, um, if he is in any way sensible. Um, 
Again, Russell is among the 0.01% richest people in the world, and he's actively lying to his audience for money to stay among that class. But he's not alone. And in this special segment that we're going to be covering, Russell, um, well, it, it, Russell is bringing into his local channel, it includes a conversation uh, with another immensely wealthy individual who lies for money. Um, so let's see who it is. Tucker, thanks for joining me for the first inaugural Break Bread with Russell Brand. Oh, I love that. We've, we can talk about our faith in our Lord Jesus, and we'll start with, if it's all right with you, by breaking bread, for didn't our Lord say, uh, do this in remembrance of me? Thank and you. we'll remember him. Mm. This is his, my body, he said, with the bread. And uh, this is grape juice because obviously you. neither you and I will ever be drinking wine again. <laughs> no. I'm not denying the miracle at Cana, but I'm, I'm <laughs> happy with the grape juice. Uh, and this is his blood. Mm. Um, Thank you. Amen. Weird. I will never not find that weird and cannibalistic. Um, so what we have here uh, is the very first installment of Break Bread with Russell Brand, um, with Tucker Carlson as the first guest. Um, essentially, the revamp of the Locals channel is going to be doubling down on the Christianity. Um, and to me, this has two obvious side effects. Uh, firstly, Russell can make his main Rumble channel far more streamlined and keep it more to the political side, which I am all for. Um, I have been getting whiplash from conversations about Ukraine funding to suddenly interviewing a bishop. Um, and uh, on a personal note, you know, while the Christianity side of Russell is definitely something to track um, and very relevant, I care far, far less about it compared to the immediate political impact he's having and the harms that can and will cause in the world. The other side effect of this is that by getting his paid subscribers who are already more fanatical about him than the average viewer to digest purely Russell-centric Christianity content, it's going to be way easier to cement them into what will potentially eventually be a cult. Um, that know, is exactly I'm, the point that I was making when I went off-brand. I was like, oh, over and over. I'm like, oh, these are all textbook signs of a cult. Like, this is how mm. you start a cult. It's mm -hmm. how we were talking about, yeah, what we were talking about, like, yeah, a couple yeah. a couple days it, ago, like oh, this is yes. <laughs> this is like the textbook shortlist, not like the obscure stuff. This is like oh, this is how you make a cult: is you yeah. you take the religion, you tweak a couple of rules, and then a couple a more bit. rules, and then a couple more rules until uh, you have a group of people that are like entirely dependent on you. Yeah. Yep. Um, it, it all feels like it's going in a very specific direction. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's... But I don't uh, let's think hit... he's got enough people on board. I don't know. I... Not yet. Not yet. Not uh, yet. You know, yeah. He's, yeah, it's it's growing. It's growing. This um, is he's, weird. He's, he's broken over two million on Rumble now. So, you know, he's, he's, he's getting there. Well, like the public uh, display of like recording... I don't know. And I mean, maybe this is just my understanding of communion, right? Because what we just watched, the video mm. we just watched and listened to for, for, you know, people that aren't watching the video is Tucker Carlson. And also, do you like how beaten down I am now that like, I don't even care. I'm like any guest, whatever. It's... <laughs> This is all. Yeah. Is it? I don't care. <laughs> I'm, just, yeah. I'm just taking it as it comes. But yeah, so it's Tucker Carlson and and Russell, and they are they ate some crackers and had some you know had some uh, grape juice. Mm -hmm. They took communion together on mm -hmm. two like black couches in this like it's clearly in a green room somewhere. Yep. Um, and that's like again not really part of it it's not supposed to be this performance i mean i guess nope they'd have a midnight mass on christmas eve from like the the big catholic church where everybody but that's like it's just part of the mass is everybody going and taking communion which is still a little weird but we it was also mesmerizing so we definitely always watched it but like mm. all this stuff is so pretty in there um <laughs> the building and like all the robes and stuff was like so cool um but yeah i don't know this is a weird performance like i don't i've had to engage with a lot of religious content that isn't mm. russell you know like having to look into kind of what you know for off brands and stuff for the show 
Mm -hmm. And I don't think they're doing it on camera because it's not supposed to be a monetized performance. It's supposed to be like, there's like rules about who should take communion when. I mean, Protestants, Mm -hmm. they're very loose. So maybe, again, this is towards the Anglican argument versus the Catholic one. But like, this is weird. This is weird. Yeah. This is yeah. weird. It's it's weird. None of it feels <laughs> none of it feels like they're doing it right, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it feels like cosplay. And like Christians mm. do not like that. <laughs> no. No. They no, want the drama, it's... but you gotta mean it. Like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> weird. Yeah, you, you you can't just kind of co opt the thing in what seems like a very performative kind of way. Um, you know, and, it's, and then it feels like it's profit. crossed the line into satire. And mm. Mm. And because this feels like a joke, I feel like I'm being pranked. Like, yeah, that's fair. It's weird. That's fair. In that um, way, not. Li- I mean, <laughs> a lot of people take communion, like whatever. And yeah, 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 but yeah. this is like, I don't think this is in the rules. I don't. I really don't. Mm, doesn't seem right to me. I mean, I, I know we have some Christian listeners. Feel free to weigh in, anyone. Um, but yeah, it doesn't feel right to me at all. Um. Anyway, let, let, let's hear the uh, the first question of sorts of this uh, little interview, getting into uh, what brought Tucker to Christianity. But we're, in our conversations in private, we've talked a lot about Jesus and we've prayed together. And it, since I've been baptized, since being chosen, since coming to faith, I've noticed that I find it harder and harder to engage in anything else. I've had so many obsessions, so many compulsions in my life. I wonder how you are dealing with what appears to be a comparable transition. It certainly seems that something has changed in you lately. I've been watching your tour a lot, the way you yeah, talk about Jesus sure. and our, even our conversations. You know, you were reading the Bible, I figure, when we like, you know, you go, so I'm reading it for the first time. And I just wonder if you could tell us about that transformation. Well, I mean, it was not intentional at all. And I, I should just say at the outset, I know nothing about theology and I don't think I'm ever going to learn. There's something about it that bothers me. I just want to go. What? With where I'm led. Um, and so I didn't set out to read the Bible or become more religious or anything like I that. I just felt this me internal pull in that direction and I followed it. And that's yes. that's where I remain um, to the this day. Pull of my but I, I will say this you can't understand what's happening in the world right now in political or secular terms because it doesn't make sense at all. Um, I still don't understand a lot of it, what? but I know for then a fact talking. that the only framework that it. <laughs> makes any sense is a spiritual one. So, um, yeah, but I, I, I feel like my life has changed dramatically in the last couple of years. The, the problem that I have, the last thing I'll say is that I, have an acute sense of what a rotten person I am and have been. And I'm not just saying that to as false humility. I really mean it. Mm. And so the last thing I want to do is be associated with Christianity because I, I don't want to discredit it. And I have noticed that when people, you know, stand up in public and say, you know, I'm, I'm Jesus's representative on the scene. I'm the, you know, the Christian ambassador. Um, they immediately get friend? attacked spiritually. The they do something horrible. Chair? They become Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, and they discredit the whole program. And I just don't want that at all. So I just want to say in every sentence, I'm not here on behalf of Jesus. I'm not a Christian representative. I'm not a great person. That's pretty obvious. And so I just want to say that again and again. Then you'd stop talking. Yep. Then um, you'd leave. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's uh yeah, I mean he doesn't want to be associated with Christianity. He's he's not a very great person. Um you know, he doesn't want to be a representative of Christianity and yet he's here having this conversation. Um uh I mean he's not a great person. I will say that is very very true. I do find it very interesting that he's sitting opposite Russell who is very much trying to be a representative of Christianity with uh, some degree of success um and tucker is there saying yeah I don't, I don't want to be a representative of christianity seemingly because he doesn't want that level of scrutiny um and because t- jim and tammy faye baker were spiritually attacked for for being representatives of christianity and somehow that's why jim baker is a piece of shit um like it's almost like he, he flew too close to the sun kind of thing um that that's what he's getting he does bring it up again later but but that's kind of that's the that's the thesis <laughs> it's well, sp- spiritual attacks crazy. 
here's what's crazy and coming mm. at me sideways. Mm -hmm. I am in a room with three individuals who probably know the least about Christianity in the world. <laughs> you weren't raised around it. You yep. come by it honestly. Mm. You just don't know because you don't. You have no reason to. Mm. You are also not representing yourself as a person who knows anything about it or is a Christian or like you aren't talking about that part. You are representing your honest, like this, I, I was raised atheist. I was, I did not engage with it. You yeah. are consistently shocked at things that are very normal to me <laughs> as someone That's who true. was raised around a very religious, <laughs> like in a very religious nation. Right. Like, mm -hmm. and, and that's honest. So it's, it would be as honest for you to sit down with no preparation and no further kind of like education whatsoever with another idiot who's like, <laughs> just like sitting down with an idiot to talk about Christianity. You are as equipped. I'm shocked at how little Russell has, Russell, Russell, Russell has absorbed. <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> at like, I don't, okay. Um, it was like, I don't, I don't know. Like these, to like the other two guys <laughs> that I'm looking at know the least about Christianity I c of anyone I can think of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They so fundamentally do not understand it. And s like giving this caveat of like, I don't know what I'm talking about. The next thing is, so I'm going to stop. And anything that they say that is not the next thing that I'm going to come, that's going to come out of my mouth is like, well, I'm going to stop talking mm. is dis fucking honest. This yeah. is crazy. This yeah. is what a boy. Let's yeah, yeah. burn some time. <laughs> let's let's burn some of my precious life force on this because <laughs> they have no clue what they're talking about. Yeah, and and you know, I, I I will say I have at least read the book. It was a while ago, but I did read the thing cover to cover. Um so so you know that that's that's more than, than can be said for Russell, actually. Yeah, and um. how much of it sticks? Uh. Yeah, not a lot. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> there are some broad points, but uh, it's a that's, big book. I couldn't big... make it anywhere near Ooh. through the whole thing, and we had several programs so to get dry. through it in a year or yeah, more they're, they're... or whatever. Big it's sections of it. Are... Yeah, yeah, but and big sections of it are just a really, really tough read. You know, I'm like, especially in the in the Old Testament, which makes up most of the book. You know, you're like, ooh, that's that's there's, there's a lot of this. Um, so other, other than all that, um, Tucker also just said, you know, which she picked up, you know, you can't understand what's happening in the world in political or secular terms whatsoever. The only framework that makes any sense is a spiritual one. Um, and now perhaps I'm getting ahead of myself because I have seen this whole thing, but to me, that all sounds just like a terrific and speedy way to completely write off and ignore the opinions of anyone who isn't a Christian. Um, like, oh, of course you think trans people are people. You aren't viewing this in spiritual terms. And even then, if you're Christian um, and don't agree with him, maybe you're not Christianing right. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's 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 always an out. Um, and, there is uh, always an out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd ask again, anyone I'm looking at, point to the part of the book that you think applies in this particular situation. Mm. Point to the part of the dogma that you think applies. Oh, is it just vibes? Okay, <laughs> that's just... this is does feel like a lot of vibes yeah. in this room. Did reading the Bible make, did Christianity make more sense or less sense if you read the whole <laughs> Bible? Yeah, I mean, I gotta say, the bit about, you know, like 900-year-old dudes and stuff, you know, there, there was a lot of it that was very confusing to me. Um, So, so yeah. Oh, Methuselah's yeah. fine. That's like, a, that's like a fun thing to know about. I'm oh, saying yeah. the whole Bible, like the whole, like, if you read the whole Bible, mm. did it, did could Christianity make more or less sense after reading the whole book? Definitely less. Yeah, definitely less. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> from, That's my point. Yeah, yeah. From from broad narrative to tiny details, definitely, definitely less less to me. Um, everyone's different, but I struggled. Um, anyway. Russell is surprised that Tucker felt the need to give this little disclaimer here at the beginning, um, and uh, and eventually, in a roundabout way, we get to what Tucker Carlson thinks a Christian is. 
it's strange that you feel the need even to offer that clarification when it's so explicit within Christianity <laughs> yes. that our fallen nature is what he loves about us, that he, it's a kingdom not no. for saints, but for sinners. The yes. proclamation no. of heaven is centered on that it's for broken people, for those of us that can't kind of cope here but you're right to acknowledge that sense that there is a tension that suddenly because i suppose there must be so I'm much piety much. and demonstrative christianity as much as Blah. like when uh, i last did your show and you asked me to pray because uh, we prayed prior and i did because i would love to pray um like i've seen that there's been a lot of attention and a lot of people have talked to me about that but oh, in particular why? people that i've known from when I was more aligned with the culture, I've noticed fizzing with sort of ferocity, vehement condemnation. I felt like if Why? they could stop you being Christian, they would stop you being Christian. 100%. There's something they don't like about Christianity. What is it, do you think? I Well, I mean, it's, um, it's purely spiritual. Because again, this is one of the things that makes no sense um, in human terms. Why would you be against Christians? It's the world's only turn your other cheek religion that commands people to be uh, faithful uh, to their wives and you know uh, work hard, be good citizens, obey I'm temporal authority. Like I'm sorry. everything about Christians. And by the way, in some countries, I can think of one Middle Eastern Muslim country, for example, uh, they they want more Christians to move there because they're great citizens. So why would you be against Christians? Um, because you know you're representing the other team is the truth. I mean, there's no other explanation for it. I mean. Have you ever been mugged by a Christian? No, no one ever has been mugged by a Christian ever. <laughs> they pay their taxes. They're good neighbors. They tend to mow their lawns. Like, Are what? You... They're not. They're not sleeping with your wife. Like, how could you be against Christians? Oh, <laughs> I can't speak to thievery, but adultery in the church I grew up in. Uh... <laughs> the Atkins diet was wild. Everybody. <laughs> uh, lots of sausage. Um... <laughs> no. Okay. Sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, bunch no, of gals but, got skinny and everyone got uh, a little wild for a summer. Yeah, I'm, I'm what? Sure. Yeah, no one's ever been mugged by a Christian, and no Christian has ever slept with someone else's wife. Oh God. Um. Yeah. That. 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 That, that did, is. That made me laugh the first time. It made me laugh this time as well. Um. That's am <laughs> It's an amazing <laughs> thing to say. Um, now, obviously, <laughs> obviously, I can list off countless cases of Christians committing crimes, not paying their taxes. Um, he mentioned, you know, probably mowing their lawns. There are plenty who probably don't mow their lawns. Um, and, uh, and, you know, Christians philandering about the place and sleeping with other people's wives. It's not hard. It turns out these people are humans and sometimes do shitty things. Um, obviously... Tucker's conception of a Christian is apparently someone who follows the rules perfectly and is also invested in decent lawn care. Um, it's worth noting, you know, that most biblical rules are quite a lot easier for Tucker to follow, given that he's an incredibly wealthy white man um, with time and opportunity essentially bending to his will. Um, mm, no, because yeah. coveting and greed are like really big things, like big problems that that these guys just ignore. They're actually major issues in well, the book and the religion itself mm, um up until very recently when prosperity gospel came along mm, those were mm. like big problems so no uh, he's I, actually got some major issues on his hands as far I, as the I don't, way he lives and what he does i don't disagree and he he does bring up the money worshiping side of things in a little bit actually um but mm. um but yeah i i also suspect that tucker carlson has never been in a position of having to commit a crime in order to feed his children you know and in that kind of moral quandary that perhaps some christians have faced um just as as an example that's also a gray area like that's the thing mm. that's why mm -hmm. the greed and the and the like coveting is is bad because it's like in your heart it's not like a material necessity because mm. mm. it's also a sin to hoard your your wealth yeah 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 um 
And underneath all this, uh, he just made the claim that Christianity is superior to all other religions because of the uh, the turn your other cheek aspect, um, as, as well as being the only religion that suggests men be faithful to their wives and work hard and be good citizens um, because of an atemporal authority. Um, and uh, I can think of quite a few others that achieve all of those things, and I'm sure Tucker yeah. can too, actually. Yeah. Um, but uh, none of those other ones advance the very specific kind of white Christian nationalism Tucker Carlson is really on board with. Um, and when you add into the equation that most Christian countries are full of white people, the idea that anyone who's against Christians is working for the other team, as he said, or to speak more plainly, is satanic, essentially the conclusion that's arrived at is anyone of another religion, usually those from countries with lots of brown people in them, mm -hmm. is working for Satan. And you're like, okay, this, this, this part of this tracks, at least part of this tracks. Um, sure. Let me yeah. tell you what sucked about that clip. Mm. You know how many times we have wanted people to ask Russell why? Mm. And the only person we've seen do it is Tucker. <laughs> and now we know what happens. Russell ignores it. <laughs> I wanted to know why too, Tucker. Mm. Good mm. instinct. Mm. Uh, from something rubbed off on you doing the quote unquote news end quote for yes. a number of years. <laughs> why? Why do you say that? And Russell's mm. just keeps on talking keep doesn't on amend doesn't change a script one fucking bit regardless of the other person talking to him and asking why or pointing anything out cool no, no. great he's, he's, been, he's been at this too long um That's, <laughs> uh, now we yeah. know now we know what happened that's what yeah. happens when you ask why now we nothing. know nothing Yes, yeah. Um, also, s small aside, but not for nothing, I've known both a Muslim and a Sikh in my life that were fanatical about lawn care, Tucker. Um, like, these people were a whisper away from starting to sell propane and propane accessories, you know. It's not just Christians mowing their lawns, is, is what I'm saying. Um, sure. And uh, to, to not let it go unaddressed, uh, the people are mad at you, Russell. Like, the reason people are mad at you is because of your performative Christianity. It's not that you're a Christian, it's that you're constantly praying on stages for attention like and other than directly contradicting the book you're supposed to be into it's also just really fucking annoying like it's very irritating you know well okay. it's just the wrong thing to do yeah like yeah. according to the book yeah 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 it's 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 annoying it's hypocritical it's 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 yeah just well, it. I noticed this. He said something about like, he's like, yeah, I'm going to do this, this communion thing. And I just mm. want to put this out there. Food mm. for thought. Mm. Um, and he also addressed his like obsessions and compulsions that he has that he struggles with. Mm -hmm. Now, what have we seen him do now? He's, he's performing the rituals. The rituals are where you get the emotional hit. Mm -hmm. Like you want the emotional hit, which also that's what you get. If you have trained yourself through meditation, which like no shade on meditation whatsoever mm. but i think what russell gets out of it is this kind of like self-talk edification like loop he's keeping the meditations he's here for the meditations right mm. so that's prayer prayer same diff i think in this scenario yeah, now, with the way he does it yeah <laughs> he keeps repro reproducing the dramatic experiences like the dramatic emotional experiences that he wants to get he wants to feel those like emotionally manipulative highs he wants to get that like that dopamine hit of mm -hmm. like he doesn't want to wait for communion once a week or once a month or whatever he wants to do it on the sh like i don't think he understands that if he does it a lot it's going to water down that that like emotional hit that like christianity doesn't really um offer a lot of like um, like spiritual kind of uh, like trance states that give you an emotional boost, um, an adrenaline hit, right? Mm. Like mm -hmm. he's <laughs> usually when people get baptized, they don't do any other baptisms again for years and years and years. And those aren't emotional, like, like it, there isn't kind of like an, a, a, an elation necessarily when you do it. Um, he keeps wanting to do the rituals that made him feel good because mm. he wants he wants that emotional hit so he's going to keep doing it he wants to have the like the the trance like you know prayer moment he wants to have we made a joke on um you know in that lovely interview that we did with um with rob that like <laughs> russell like oh russell isn't going to start like snake handling is he and speaking in tongues maybe 
that's that's it's, the end of the road he's going down. Yeah, this this is it. If he's chasing the dragon, you know, if 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 that's you know, that's where we're going because <laughs> that's where be. you Pentecostals yeah. where you get that dramatic emotional hit on Sunday mm. and Wednesday. Like that's that's because it's these kind of like you know like the physical experiences, the mm. like physical manifestations of this emotional like this when you feel the presence of the lord right like it's you mm -hmm. are having an emotional response mm -hmm. that is like th this like group emotional response so um yeah like he wants to keep take if he thinks he can like keep taking communion to commune harder yeah like, <laughs> that yeah he'll keep yeah. getting that hit and keep baptizing because well, that baptism well, yeah, feels and, so and, good and, that's and... not for for it to actually kind of have an impact because because as we explored in the off brand you know a, a lot of this stuff isn't working for him very well you know he's struggling with with uh with embracing the the christianity you know he 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 needs uh he needs something to provide the juice you know yeah. so so wouldn't shock me if, if we end up going down that road at this point yeah he was <laughs> cosplaying in religions that had a lot more like fun exciting activities mm -hmm that gave him that kind of like feeling yeah. and i don't think he's gonna find it in christian sorry <laughs> like it's not going well so far that's that seems to be seems to be <laughs> where we we're at that youth group when we were kids yeah. it's because you go to you you go to centrifuge you you go to like <laughs> you go to camp and you have that experience and you got to ride that for a long time there boss like you don't get mm. to have that experience all the time that's that's the that's like that's how they get you they get yeah. you with the fun stuff and then you gotta show it for the boring shit. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, there seem to be there seem to be problems. Um anyway, Tucker isn't quite done with this uh this thought of his. Unless unless you are against Jesus. And why would you be against Jesus? This is a guy who didn't actually try to overthrow Rome. He allowed them to torture him to death. Like, why is that a threat to you? You know, seriously, like because why what how could do. that possibly be a threat? <laughs> Well, How but, could opposing abortion, you know, if someone's like, well, I'm going to blow up abortion. Oh, I get it. That's a threat. That's violence. But if someone stands <laughs> up and says, you know, I actually think it's wrong. Okay. You know, maybe we disagree. I mean, why is that so threatening to you? I don't understand it. It's so revealing, though, of the nature of the conflict, which is, is spiritual. And it's revealing of the stakes, which are eternal. This, these are really big this is really a big deal, these conversations that we're having, much bigger than the debates we used to have about tax rates. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those are two different things. Um, and uh, plenty of people were having debates about abortion when you were debating tax rates on Crossfire, Tucker. Um, as for why- He wasn't doing that either, by the way. No, no. <laughs> He doesn't give a flying fuck about policy. No, he does not. Um, as for why rich white men loudly opposing reproductive rights for women is a threat, uh, Lauren led an off-brand on the state of reproductive rights in the U.S. not that long ago, and the situation is fucking bleak. Um, it's tens getting of, worse. It's getting worse. Tens of thousands of women having forced pregnancies, thousands of women bleeding out in hospitals because doctors refuse to help them, because if they do when the baby dies, they'll be sent to prison. Like, that is a direct product of rich white men loudly opposing reproductive rights for women both financially and politically don't ask me how it's a threat when it's literally killing people right now you know <laughs> it's like it's it's genuinely like yes and it's <laughs> up until basically jerry falwell had that epiphany and wanted to push the religious right into politics up until that point christianity understood that Listen, it, and and I don't agree, but Christianity, if Christianity moved you to not want to get an abortion yourself, Catholicism was big on that, kind of only big on this um, for a long time. Like, if that's how you feel, even the book, the rules of the book say, okay, well, then you don't make that choice for yourself. You do not have a right to force other people to believe what you believe, especially, I mean, especially in like a country that um, was founded on the concept of separation between church and state. This hmm. is literally what they were avoiding is to not be able to impose your religious doctrine in policy mm -hmm. with the government. If you want to make that choice, 
that's up to you. What's crazy is like, there's all these, um, you know, there's like news guys and it just pundits, like normal, like people that don't even necessarily have like, they're not activists. They don't have, you know, like it's not their platform to fight for abortion are like, my mom would have died if she mm. didn't have these procedures that are like routine. It's yeah. a routine healthcare procedure because pregnancy is dangerous. Yeah. And you need to take steps to protect everyone involved like the whole time. Mm. So the fact that the culture war has gotten to this point is so far removed from religion. It's so removed from any of that shit. But religion has been used as a wedge and a tool to like to get where we are. Yep. Yep. yep very effectively um but worship the fucking founding fathers too great don't listen to anything <laughs> they said but worship them like deities because they love that no they it, regardless of how the, the problematic egos they had they were not going for that that's not what they said nope. it's not what they wanted nope no nope. jesus definitely definitely wasn't um and yeah spe speaking of jesus um yeah do, do you think in that in that book jesus didn't know what the effect of him getting killed on the cross was, was gonna be you know like well i think he meant like who's afraid of jesus like that's mm, like mm. which i would point out well then you should be really stoked about muslim people because jesus is included in their religion that's that's part of their religion yeah. Yeah. is jesus so should you be super psyched on muslims also he you know? doesn't seem Why? to be yeah doesn't seem to be mm. that mm. is that blows my fucking mind mm. it blows my mind like no they're <laughs> actually big fans of jesus yeah yeah got no problems it's in the book <laughs> in their book um, yes yeah yeah um so from here russell and tucker uh, they start to talk about globalism and secularism um before getting to the subject of political realignment and one of the amazing and super cool things that i'm noticing is that people in the united states i can only speak to american politics on the right which is where i'm from but they're reassessing a lot of their previous assumptions which were really evil one was, you know, a lot of them were violence worshipers. Yeah. And two, including me. And two, a lot of them were money worshipers, including yeah. me. Huh. And that's bad. That's just bad. That doesn't make you happy. You wind up hurting other people. There's just this incredible realignment of politics into two camps, each one standing for the mirror image of the other, whether they know it or not. And um, and I'm glad because it's it's all very obvious like we know what we're dealing with now hmm okay um again if you're viewing everything in a biblical sense you know you you can come to a binary system of good and evil um uh, much like what jordan peterson was presenting last week um and if you know suddenly like tucker's saying everyone's dividing into two camps and one is the mirror image of the other uh it becomes very clear that the implication is that his camp is the good camp and the other camp is the evil camp um also Nice to know he's repenting on his previous Warhawk stance with Iraq, um, and apparently repenting for his money worshipping. Curiously, I don't see him donating a bunch of his money to charity or to churches even, or anything like that. In fact, I mostly see him raking in absolute bucket loads of money while already having inherited like half a billion dollars when he was young. Um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of words from this Tucker guy and not a lot of actions to back it up. You know what I'm saying? If mm. it was newspapers, he'd be a hoarder. Why is mm. it different that he has money he will never, ever even be able to use? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like a If he has particularly... too much, why does he have it? Yeah. Yeah. Just like a pasty alt-right dragon, you know, just, just sitting on his gold and like, oh, yeah, this is good. This is good. Um, you know? Just, just <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's holding just... it all together. Um... <laughs> yeah. Also, like, who gives a shit if you're repenting from anything? Like, no, you were part of the problem and you got a lot more work to do than just being like... I'm a I'm a dove kinda because that's yeah. all of their fucking quotes, not just his. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're and not. It, it's 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 <laughs> it's not enough to be like this is bad. Like you're still doing it, dude. Like you're still. Did you not read the bit about you know camel through the eye of a needle, rich man into heaven? That that whole that whole thing, you know. That's the other part of repenting is stopping doing it. Right. Stop hoarding. <laughs> right. <laughs> and also stop like stop profiting off of 
the war machine, which is exactly what he's still doing because yeah. he wasn't going to go over there and shoot a gun or drive a tank. What he was doing was profiting off of a war and mm -hmm. he did it the best way he could. And that's the same thing he's doing now. So it's the same old sin with a different location. And mm -hmm. this is not special or new for Tucker. And if he actually mm -hmm. felt bad about any of it, he'd fucking stop. He'd yep. take a second, think about it and not continue to say incendiary things. Things. Because sorry, if you're saying shit that costs you nothing after the fact when it would have cost you something at the time, I don't care. I don't care. Mm. I don't care. Do the yep. right thing now. Oh, you still aren't? Then I don't give a shit. I, you can say you you repent. Did you learn the lesson? No, because of your current behavior? Well, then shut the fuck up. I don't buy it. It's Same not, applies. that's Same not how this works. Russell. Same applies to both. Russell, yes, right? yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Don't wear your fucking underwear in the baptism picture that everybody has to look at. You fucking creep. Yep. Um, okay. So next we see uh, an attempt to uh, redefine what Christian nationalism is or whether it even exists at all. And I, I think a lot, and perhaps you can generally help this, you know, that they say with lawyers, you never should ask a question unless you know the answer to it. But Thankfully, I'm not a lawyer, although you know, would, I could save a lot of money if I was one. Um, like, but like, I, I'm sure you I, could. Like, do you feel that, in a sense, there is um, an, a, a contradiction in the phrase Christian nationalism, that to be truly Christian means that above all else you love Christ and above all else we are all Christ's family and above all else we are one family and we yield to no authority but Christ. And I wonder what challenges that provides us when it comes to something like patriotism, say. So I think Christianity, I don't think I know, is unique among uh, the dominant religions in this country in that it's a universal religion. The, the idea of Christianity is everyone's created by God. Everyone can have a direct relationship with God through Jesus. Everybody, no matter where you're from, what you look like, that's that accounts for the Christian concern for all people everywhere because every person has the spark of God inside him. So that's one of my, I think that's true, objectively true. It's one of my favorite things about our religion. And so you're right, that's incompatible with the idea that only people in my country matter. I think in the United States, nationalism is a way of expressing the following idea that the purpose of government is to serve the people it represents, period. Mm. And they, our leaders have a duty to represent us because we own this government. It belongs to us. It, they are not appointed by God to run this government. It's not, we're not, they're tenants. They're not our landlords. We are the owners. They're our employees and their decisions have to benefit us and our children. That's, I think, what people mean when they say nationalism or America first. They mean the people yeah. rule. No, That's I think like that, the opposite. Yeah, the the America First thing is is definitely 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 a little different. Um and um yeah, also like the book you apparently like says that governments are as God intended them to be and you should obey them. So I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure about that one. Um but it doesn't matter because the aim of this question um and answer is to deny Christian nationalism is even a thing. Um right. so, so 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 first up, uh, the things that Tucker supposedly loves about Christianity apply to a lot of other theologies. Um, you know, if you extract the specific Jesus part, you can replace Christianity with any of the Abrahamic religions, and it'll still be functionally the same thing that Tucker is talking about here um and a lot of the ideas he's mentioning go way further back than that um yeah. you know everyone having one creator everyone being able to have a direct relationship with the deity you know no matter who they are and where they're from like these are not new ideas and they are certainly not exclusive or unique to christianity um as for these ideas being incompatible with nationalism, the Bible does have some fun parts about destroying any government that isn't Christian, um, and any peoples who are not Christian. Um, and when you start to imprint those ideas onto nations and nationalities, Christian nationalism starts to make a lot of sense. Like, aha, the US is a Christian nation and therefore good, while Iran, for instance, is not a Christian nation and therefore bad. You know, it's those bits that partly led to, you know, the Crusades. Um, to be clear, I'm, I'm going to read a definition of Christian nationalism, and for fun, I'm going to read the definition from ChristianityToday.com, which one could assume is biased in favor of Christianity. Uh, quote, 
Christian nationalism is the belief that the American nation is defined by Christianity and that the government should take active steps to keep it that way. Popularly, Christian nationalists assert that America is and must remain a Christian nation, not merely as an observation about American history, but as a prescriptive program for what America must continue to be in the future. Scholars like Samuel Huntington have made a similar, a similar argument, uh, that America is defined by its Anglo-Protestant past and that we will lose our identity and our freedom if we do not preserve our cultural inheritance. Christian nationalists do not reject the First Amendment um, and do not advocate for theocracy, pin in that, um, but they do believe that Christianity should enjoy a privileged position in the public square. The term Christian nationalism is relatively new and its advocates generally do not use it of themselves, but it accurately describes American nationalists who believe American identity is inextricable from Christianity. And to skip ahead a little bit, uh, Christian nationalists want to define America as a Christian nation and they want the government to promote a specific specific cultural template as the official culture of the country. Some have advocated for an amendment to the Constitution to recognize America's Christian heritage, others to reinstitute, uh, reinstitute prayer in public schools. Some work to enshrine a Christian nationalist interpretation of American history and school curricula, uh, including that America has a special relationship with God or has been chosen by him to carry out a special mission on Earth. Others advocate for immigration restrictions specifically to prevent a change to American religious and ethnic demographics or a change to American culture. Some want to empower the government to take stronger action to circumscribe immoral behavior. Unquote. Now, that last part sounds a lot like advocating for Christian theocracy to me, um, but I feel like perhaps ChristianToday.com didn't necessarily want to upset its reader base more than it was already about to, as the article itself is firmly against Christian nationalism in the Yeah, Twitter well, and, I mean, technically, a mm. theocracy would mm. be that the head of the church is also the head of the state. So technically, <laughs> right, that's right, not right. what they're on, asking. On the most specific interpretation, that's, yeah, I guess. If, that's, yeah. if they're trying to define the term, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's not what they're asking for. But what they're saying is like, just because they aren't asking specifically for a theocracy, they're not asking for a pope. Like, mm -hmm. doesn't mean mm -hmm. that. Like, I think it's, 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 um, I think it might be depending on who's reading it and who's looking at it, right? But like, I think it's a good idea to put that in there because it is an easy way to deflect the Christian nationalism kind of um, accusation. It's like, well, we don't want, like, we still want a president. We still want a government. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But specifically, like, what you want in a theocracy is that the church is in charge. But technically, a theocracy would be that the head of the church is also head of state. Right, so right, right, right. That's a that's a get out of jail free. That's like a semantic argument thing that they could say to be like, no, we don't want a theocracy. Like you really do, but <laughs> not in name, right? Right, like, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, because you know what what the article describes is exactly the project that Russell and Tucker have been aiming for. Um, with Russell explicitly advocating for Christian theocracy on a weekly basis. Um, you know that that that's yeah. exactly the thing. Um, so Tucker and Russell are just lying here to to obfuscate the idea that Christian nationalism even exists, and honestly, they're doing a pitiful job of it. I'm gonna say this is some weak tea, um, and there are a few things a British person hates more than weak tea. Um, just... This is what I'm saying. Mm. These guys are can't they know the least about yeah. Christianity? Yeah, you Why are, are they in this conversation? <laughs> over your depth. Like you are yeah. in over your head. Yeah, you are out of your depth. Do not yeah. do this. You said like any even like I mean the amount I don't know I I think they're overshooting the cognitive dissonance of their listeners unless it's unless they like are really cooked like because mm. any regular Christian walking around is not going to listen to this and they're gonna be like oh these guys have no fucking idea well, like like wait a minute. <laughs> Like, they don't even know our, like, they, they don't know basic lore. It'd be like me talking about the Marvel universe. I right. don't, that's not where I, I don't know. Yeah. I have yeah. no idea. I'm not going to start. I'm not here to waste your fucking time. It's like your precious life on this earth by trying to pontificate about the Marvel universe. Because I don't know shit about shit. What are they doing? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The, these, these, um self-admitted very new people to christianity probably shouldn't just shouldn't be having this conversation like, um at the end of the even day. <laughs> thinking about right now i'm thinking about trying to engage with a conversation about the marvel universe and it gives me an embarrassed like yeah. pit 
in my stomach. I'd be like, oh no, it'd be so inappropriate. I'd be so embarrassed. How do these guys not have that shame, like that appropriate, (laughs) healthy shame response? (laughs) That is your body telling you stop. Mm. That's not like your body saying like, no, you are like, you're out of pocket. Get in pocket, get in the pocket. Where everything, like, because it's fucking rude. Like, it's rude and it's shitty and it's a waste of space. Pr- pretty insulting to everyone watching it, whether they're yeah. Christian or not, you know? <laughs> you know? Sure like, oh. is. <laughs> um, so, with no trace of irony whatsoever, we move from denying that Christian nationalism exists to trafficking in great replacement theory. <laughs> I get it. It's to reiterate something that should be obvious. But in stating that, what the claim made is, is that you're talking about exclusion. You're saying that well, right. this is America. Right. As I've commented before, when I saw you answer that question in uh, Australia, there was embedded into the question, the person made assumptions that you were saying that uh, mass migration impacted white American jobs. You said, I never said white American jobs. And it's <laughs> like that these assumptions are sort of stitched in. There are sort of nefarious assumptions. No, no, but that's problem that I have with the way mass migration is used now is it's used as a political instrument to disempower people. You're using, you're literally trafficking people. You're using them as objects in order to accumulate political power. And I, that's inherently dehumanizing, you know, uh, if you're, so there's close. no sense in so which close. our immigration arrangement has any purpose other than to make the people currently in charge in charge forever to create a one party state that's not a virtuous goal at all it has nothing to do with the lives of the people being trafficked by drug cartels across our border at all they're just pawns in this and i dislike any system that uses people as objects as widgets in a bin waiting assembly on a on a line i i just i don't i think you should treat people like human beings they have names and fingerprints and souls you know what i mean On that basis, it is weird how Tucker doesn't seem to take any issue with capitalism and will go to seemingly great lengths to defend capitalism, despite Uh that system dehumanizing people and treating them as commodities by design. Um, Hmm. (laughs) Hmm. This is what bugs me, man. Mm -hmm. That first sentence he said, Mm -hmm. total, good. Not just reasonable, good. And I've seen quotes flying around, not recently, but it has, Mm. it it pops up occasionally of like, I hate to agree with Tucker Carlson, but he said this one sentence. But like, right. yeah, that's completely right. Like, no, 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 no. He is so vague and far removed from his point that, like, this, he's talking about voter fraud. Like, yeah, yeah, you, you need to include the five sentences around the sentence, you know, it, like, you need all of the context with this but, guy. But also the context of the conversation, because, like, mm-hmm. you could even make the argument that, like, yeah, it's not right for American businesses to rely on migrant labor because they can exploit migrant labor. That's absolutely correct, as a, as if that was what he was talking about. Mm, if that was the assessment. Because yeah. it wouldn't be necessarily political. Po- I mean, t- I mean, you can make the tangential, like, argument that like people like businesses who exploit migrant labor are also are are accumulating political power by monopolizing monetary power and their own business power but so like the thing is is like people that have like totally reasonable and very like um reality grounded ideas about the world could hear that and think reasonable Mm. yeah and yeah. maybe just the word political, like, oh, well, he means like, you know, like corporate, political, like lobbying power, whatever. Yeah. That, <laughs> I don't like that he is saying something, like he is deliberately saying something that is so close to real and so close to good and the truth. Yeah. Like, I don't, we don't hear that very often. Cause like, you're like, oh, you're so close, but oh, nope, that's dumb, is different than saying like, you are so close. And if you got quoted, it is entirely reasonable for someone to think that you are a reasonable person making a reasonable conclusion. That's yeah. scary to me. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. Whereas, uh, whereas he's definitely not. Um, that's that's right. in, in the wider context. Yeah. He's exactly. He's talking, he's talking about voter fraud. Um, this, yeah. this isn't, this isn't new for Tucker. Um, he's no. long been an advocate for great replacement theory, uh, claiming that the whites are being replaced by Brown people at the behest of the Democrats or the globalists or both, usually with a not so subtle anti-Semitic undertone, suggesting the Jews are in charge of the project. Um, and it's not just migration that he shouted about either. He has also continuously harped on about white birth rates being lower than Brown birth 
birth rates and how that is also part of the Great Replacement Conspiracy. Um, this specific version that he's rattling off here is the idea that Democrats are allowing people in by the millions in order to ensure they'll all vote Democrat, and that way they can steal this election and all the elections forever. And um, it's just dumb shit backed up by racism and xenophobia. Uh, it doesn't stand up to even a modicum of scrutiny. Um, and again, without a hint of irony, is promoting a very specific brand of white Christian nationalism. <laughs> <laughs> the thing they just said doesn't exist. Uh, yeah, right, well, but that's also like that's the problem with these like totally like almost correct statements. Mm. If he can thinly veil those like those moments, and then he gets quoted on those things, and the people are like, I can't believe I'm, I'm agreeing with Tucker Carlson. Yeah, like yeah. I've heard it come out of people's mouths who do not have the time reasonably so to listen to every single fucking thing these people say because mm. of the context of the actual statement like it's well, and it's yeah. hard i can't argue with that that statement i the only thing i had it's i sound crazy when i'm arguing with that statement that he just made i sound crazy because i'm like he's talking about voter fraud he's talking about like and that's it sounds like i'm accusing him of a conspiracy that is not present it makes me look like the whack job trying to be like no no no, you don't understand the context it's like saying like no no you don't understand he's a lizard like it it, it sounds that yeah. way to someone who is looking for a reasonable like discourse and is assuming that he's acting in good faith and then i'm the one that has to be like no no no. he's talking about something completely different that he's not mentioning at all in this statement and i have to like that's also why this show is like we have to over explain and give all this context mm. it is so dangerous like it just yeah yeah I, 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 I would hope i would hope that him mentioning like a one-party state would hopefully raise red flags for some people but it might not you know um also the the, the, the but irony that's the context the, that's what i'm saying well, yeah yeah the, the irony of this conversation is, is that at the start um you know the russell mentioned all oh, the this clip of of tucker um having a q a with an audience and someone basically called him out for being racist um talking yeah. about you know uh, you know white jobs and he's like i never said white jobs i just said jobs and it's like no 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 i i know you, you didn't say white jobs you implied it you heavily implied it in as many air quotes as you possibly could around that thing you know? that example yeah that's 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 the example that is a perfect summation of the complaint and like the concern i have mm -hmm. is that he's like well i didn't say it yeah but you fucking meant it but then the yes. person who's trying to like point that out accurately the person who actually knows what's going on sounds mm. fucking crazy yeah yeah well yeah it's and and you're absolutely right it's it's why this show is as long as it is because russell plays the same trick you know he's like well i didn't say that like no you're just you know heavily pointed at it in every possible way um but sure you that yeah say, i mean there you know. <laughs> that's the thing it, like even like tucker only had so much time on his fox show mm. to and also like legal constraints like there were still somehow guardrails where now mm. there are n there are none mm -hmm. like that's what we're, i'm listening to right now would not have passed muster for his show but yeah. because yeah. he can just the, the amount of content they can put out and produce and genuinely say the fucking same thing over and over and over so it's not like they're saying a bunch of new interesting things all the time they've mm. got like four shit that they say and that's it but they package it in different ways and they're fucking tedious and boring so that means they can talk for fucking ever about nothing so like and they think it's fine because they're also egomaniacs so like it is all buried and then people like the if the argument can be made like oh well that's not what they meant you have to go listen to the whole thing and then you send a, a three-hour video over nope no no yeah no. Yeah, if yeah. you can't explain the context and if you can't address the context do not send me a three-hour fucking video as a rebuttal you if you can't explain it simply then you don't understand it either no we're not doing that no mm, yeah this is not it's what alex jones kept trying to do in the fucking trials yes yeah 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 absolutely <sighs> Um, so next uh, is something I very genuinely never expected to hear a defense of, full stop, let alone on Russell's show. Yeah, it's incredible that you would use that image system because there's no question that industrialization and the ability to maneuver and control matter is one of the m moments that generated a sort of impotent of shift of towards a, a kind of mass and industrialized. Of course, everyone pisses on feudalism, but consider the relationship in feudalism between the Lord and his serfs. It was symbiotic. <laughs> The Lord was in charge of the serfs. Okay. 
abuses happened. I'm against those. On the other hand, the Lord couldn't live without the serfs. He needed them. They, they, they were living in symbiosis. Each one needed the other. And industrialization changed that equation and labor became a, you know, a kind of fungible commodity and that dehumanized people. Just okay, <laughs> he's not entirely wrong, but he's also completely wrong. He's both. Here's the thing, like, just how divorced from reality do you have to be? How firmly in your rich, white, almost billionaire bubble do you have to be before saying out loud into a microphone, hey, everyone, like, hear me out, hear me out. Feudalism was good. Yeah, not buying it. Um, well, not buying it. He's, he's not saying that necessarily. I mean, go, say your piece, but like, I don't think he's saying that necessarily, but he's still saying the wrong thing. Like he's saying the wrong, he's, he's getting the wrong lesson. But I mean, if you're already gonna talk about it, then. Well, no, that, 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 that's, that's most of, like, he, he's, he's, he's saying, well, everyone shits on feudalism. I'm like, yeah, but why? Like, like, yeah, the, like the, the lesson for me from that would be like, yeah, maybe the people have way more power and, and should, you know, maybe be much more equal in this in this kind of situation rather than having a fucking lord, you know, like. <laughs> well, that's it, also kind of the point. Like, that's because that, mm. what he was saying, he was comparing like um, feudalism to industrialization and to a degree and not necessarily to a degree in a different way than Tucker is talking about it. Um he he's talking about industrialization allowed the you know like the ownership class to exploit the labor class like to exploit and kind of like um not just monetize but uh you know widgetify the our labor to such an extent so what ford was all about right like the assembly line is like divorcing us from the skills of the labor to the mm. point where we are all interchangeable whereas there were people in the like in in a surf system right like in a feudal system where like you couldn't make a like there were guys that were in charge that knew what was up and you didn't and everyone would starve if you didn't let them do their thing. There was more like the more that you have specialization and you have um, organization, then you like a, among the workers, you do have more power and you do have more control. And it is kind of crazy to think about that, like in feudalism, there was a like there was a more reciprocal relationship. Now, the quality of that reciprocal relationship and what Tucker's talking about varied wildly, but like you were like there there was a lot more there were a lot more um they were conventions, so it wasn't really a law, but sometimes there were laws where like you had to feed people, you had to give them shelter, you like you had to at least have a baseline to care for the people you were in charge of. Um and yet, and what he's saying, like, yeah, there were abuses, like, okay, there was also no autonomy. That's a problem. But there were more requirements, like none of our jobs today are obligated to give us food and shelter. None of our jobs today have to give us like paid time off or medical benefits or whatever. There's some of them that have to, but most of a, a, a majority or a large portion of them that don't. Um... And it is weird to think about and learn about um, even the way that our houses look in America, row houses. They were subsidized by the companies that were employing people. The relationship to worker and owner has been completely like atomized and severed in a way that was not. I mean, it was like the cool thing about religion um, during during feudal times is there were so there were so many holidays <laughs> like they did get more days off because they were also more like kind of integrated into um the oldest calendar for humans which is the agrarian calendar like you couldn't do harvesting when it wasn't time to harvest and now jobs are like you have to harvest for eight hours a day five days a week when Harvest only happened once. Planting only happened once. It would have to happen at a certain time. There were very important like moments where there was work to be done. But when there was no work to be done, there was no work to be done. So like, it is a totally different way of life where in some aspects, and, and I didn't make this argument, and it's also not necessarily an argument for feudalism. It was just totally different. We cannot put our modern values or understanding into that era and time 
And it's also different from chattel slavery or slavery in mm. general. Like feudalism had its own system and it was also church was also part of it. So the people that made a problem, big problem, but the people that could follow all the rules, it would work out okay as long as nothing went wrong, right? But that's the thing is like you can't assume that nothing's going to go wrong in your whole life. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and, and like I'm, I'm willing to accept that you know a feudal lord would have like much more direct consequences if they did a shitty job, for instance. Um, you know, like the, the, there would, there would be direct or a state impacts. lord, right, right. He'd be um, killed. Like the thing is, is like yes. murder was on the table for aristocrats across the board for many years. So even just like gestures to either like gestures towards, um, being a good leader or just taking their hands off. Um, and letting the country run, um, that would make you a good king and good kings didn't get murdered. But see, I, I would think that Tucker would be against the idea of taking autonomy away from all these people in this, in this scenario of his, you know, I, I would think that he would be against that. Um, and he doesn't appear to be. Also, I'm not sure he would be. I'm not sure he is against like Henry Ford and that and that side of things either. I'm, I'm th positive th he's not. Yeah, yeah. What um, he said it, just was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh God, this man. Is... The thing is, is if there's guys that know how to make your shoes, and there's no one else in town that knows how to make your shoes, don't fuck with them, or you don't get shoes. That's not mm. the world we live in anymore. Mm. There was power within the specialization and organization of workers. So it didn't always work out. And in fact, feudalism, also bad. We cannot apply medieval feudalism, a thing I happen to be low-key obsessed with. Like, I might know a lot about it. So when you have that system, there there are... There are galling exceptions that make their rounds and memes occasionally, and they're not entirely true. Like every single like high holy day where you were not allowed to work, there was plenty of problems with that. But mm. that also meant that like you were owed like the, the bread and circuses of it all. You were owed bread and you were owed circuses. And we don't even get that. We don't even get that now because of the atomization of work and and the and the hyper like hyper atomization and industrialization and like the separation from people, like the separation people experience in their jobs. I just these arguments are absolutely used by um, by conservatives and they always have been to like cite the absolute best possible, not best actual, best possible parts of like there there was an ideal. For feudalism and then there was a reality and the ideal is the noble and um they were called nobles come on um noble and like uh and and responsible good christian lord provided for the people and then the people reciprocated that's the ideal that wasn't the reality on the ground so what he's talking about is the ideal the christian like the 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 Christian ideal from God is that everyone does great all the time and doesn't need checks yeah, and balances. It's, it's the same as his conception of what a Christian is, you know, so someone who never sleeps with someone else's wife, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that, on paper, sure. Yeah. On tablet, sure. In reality, that's not life. And no. that's not how this works. Power gets exploited. Like that's power leads to exploitation. That's what I'm saying is like, he's getting there's this nugget of like there's a nugget of truth that he is completely like silly puttying like it's just mm -hmm. the nugget gets stamped and then he has bent it out of all recognition but again there's enough tr like kernel in it for someone who's not paying a ton of attention or not like super informed to know that he's being manipulative no. he doesn't that's yeah that's and it, it's not just tucker there's like a whole section of conservatism that like makes these arguments for um feudalism in like it started as like fun learning about history and now it's it's i don't know it's a solar thing that like <laughs> that catholic feudalism was better because of all the vacations days <laughs> like it's and that's not true like it's 
but it's not not true you know yeah I don't know. It's, yeah it's just yeah, a, it's it, a total it, misrepresentation yeah it does feel like uh there's a lot of context missing from that conversation you know too much <laughs> yeah too much way too much hi uh, sorry i had to say it all really quickly <laughs> and i hope it made any amount of sense because yeah there's a there are volumes that are missing from the volumes of context that are missing from what he's saying Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, again, without a hint of irony, Tucker moves on to talking about how governments don't care about the people that they govern. Um, and uh, again, we get to this nugget of truth that he's trampling on. Mm. The explosion, the exponential explosion in technological power in the last 30 years with the rise of the Internet has made it much worse and has has allowed our leaders to really just forget that they're they're ruling over people at all. I think they think people are irrelevant. And now I think they think people are in the way. And I look at the, I might give you a million examples, but the one I'm currently obsessed with is the MAID program, the medical assistance in dying program in Canada, where the Canadian government, basically, if you're depressed or don't have a house or you think the economy is moving in the wrong direction, they'll just, they'll kill you. They'll <laughs> offer to kill you. You go to the doctor, well, have you considered suicide? So what is that? Without even taking a position on physician-assisted suicide, which I'm adamantly against, but just like the attitudes on display there are so anti-human. They regard people as just disposable. And I there's nothing worse than that, in my opinion. Yeah, they'll, they'll just offer to kill you, those Canadian doctors. If you tell them, well, I'm not sure about Trudeau's economic policy, they'll be like, have you thought about being dead? Um, you know, gets rid of the economic concerns, the whole death thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, this is nuts. <laughs> Again. <laughs> History buffs out there, let's all unite. Before modern medicine and being able to manage symptoms and offer palliative care, the way that people had to die. What's crazy is how resilient the human body is mm. to, for suffering. Your whole body can turn into pus and start to rot before you die. And it happened all the time because that was the notion that like, that was the Christian notion that it was immoral to commit so you wouldn't go to heaven if you committed suicide yes yeah, quote yeah, yeah, unquote yeah. committed suicide you could just end your your suffering is mm -hmm. what i mean legit problem that like and canada is like trying to address it that's also like old news is that guy that was like well i'm homeless i'll be homeless yeah, so, right. so i might so as well so the, the, this yeah this is this is yeah. an old thing um like canada's made pro program has been the subject of controversy due to the canadian government want to be, wanting to include a mental health provision whereby someone can voluntarily end their life with medical assistance solely due to mental illness um and there are significant questions around how these people would be assessed and whether any consideration would be given to the idea of like circumstantial depression for instance like the idea of a houseless person falling on tough times perhaps feeling suicidal due to their circumstances more so than mental illness and there's there's a lot of debate around what safeguards should be put in place and how, um, but th this particularly contentious can has been kicked down the road since 2021 and will be reassessed properly in 2027. Um, so yeah, this, this is not new. Um, and in the meantime with the MAID program, um, to be eligible for medical assistance currently um, in dying, you must meet all the following criteria. You must be eligible for health services funded by a province or territory or the federal government. You must be at least 18 years old and mentally competent, um, have a grievous and irremediable um, uh, medical condition, uh, make a voluntary request for medical assistance in dying. The, re the request cannot be the result of outside pressure or influence. Um, so you can't have a doctor just being like, hey, have you thought about death? Um, uh, you must give informed consent um, to receive medical assistance in dying as well. And, and, and the informed consent part includes being informed about all the treatment options, all of the other things first. This is very much a last resort situation. And 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 um, to be clear, to be considered as having a grievous this an irremediable um, medical condition, you must meet all of the following criteria, right? You must have a serious illness, disease, or disability, be in an advanced state of decline that cannot be reversed, um, experience unbearable physical or mental suffering from your illness, disease, disability, or state of decline that cannot be relieved under conditions that you consider acceptable. So you have to meet all of those conditions, not just some, not just... It, all of what I've just said has to apply before before you're allowed to to go down this road. Um, weirdly, there's nothing about your opinions on the state of the economy in either of those lists. Um, but uh... oh shit, <laughs> that was that list went sideways so fast. <laughs> if you're depressed or you don't have a house or you think the economy's shit, well, like 
They'll just kill you. They'll kill you. That's yeah, for do. a second, Tucker almost cared about a houseless person. Almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's again coming so close. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, so next, uh, T- Tucker drives his philosophy home, and um, I have a question. All I'm saying is, when you give the state the right to kill people because they're burdensome or expensive, or you know, are in the way, that you know, people don't have the right to kill other people except in self-defense. Period. You don't have that right. You didn't create life. You're not allowed to end life except in self-defense. Period. And I will say, as someone who's been on the right my entire life, I just want to say that to my friends on the right in the United States, you do not have the right to kill people except in self-defense ever because you are not God. And if you decide that you have that right, if you decide you are God and you just get to kill people for because it's going to make the world better or whatever, you're a monster. And just know that. That's, by the way, I didn't always feel that way, but I now do. I feel it strongly enough to become unpopular by saying it. But I just want to say it one more time. You don't have the right to kill people except in self-defense, period. So my question is, what constitutes self-defense? Right. Because if someone feels like their country is being, I don't know, invaded, for instance, um, because some chucklehead keeps throwing great replacement theory narratives around, the argument could be made that, hey, yeah, I killed all these migrants to protect myself and keep my freedoms and protect democracy. Um, These people keep telling me that democracy is going to be stolen from me, so what alternative did I have? You know? (laughs) And and maybe that was self-defense. Right? I'd say it is um, bad, um, ethically evil, maybe even sinful, to um, whip people into a froth to think that they are in immediate danger, and anything that they do, regardless of how violent or appropriate for the situation, is self-defense because they believe they're in danger. Mm. Yeah. That is wrong, and that's what both of these guys make money doing. It is bad. It is evil. It is not right. Yeah, so yeah. like the, okay. the the immediate example that springs to mind in this bullshit, Carl Rittenhouse, right? He believed and it somewhere worked. in his it worked. That's the baffling. He's out thing. tooling <laughs> around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's palling about the place, having traveled Bopping cross around. country to shoot people in self defense. Yeah, uh, you know, you're like hang on a second. But yeah. you know, that's that's the that's the kind of thing. That's the kind of thing that Tucker's. Um, the talk is fine with, um, you know. Yeah, so. but the state will kill someone who was in jail for life and was in a car with someone else who committed a cr- who committed a murder. Mm. Maybe. Mm. Yeah. That guy will get killed. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't. Uh, Being doesn't lecture doesn't be, help. <laughs> doesn't no, it re- really doesn't. Um, in in any of these cases. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he he seems to take far less issue with that. Mm. Um, also, yeah, it's just. Oh, yep. this guy's exhausting. Um, so, so, so now in a, in a roundabout way, um, Russell airs some of his struggles with uh, Christianity. This uh, clarity with which you speak and this fearlessness, do you think it's been a- a- impacted by what? A- this seems to be in what I'm suggesting is a transformation into well, of a more explicit Christian. And can you please speak to me a bit, Tucker, about something that was on my mind, has been on my mind a lot. I, I'm not from the right. I'm from the left, cultural left, Hollywood, all that kind of stuff. Was really into the idea of Pin socialism. Because I mm. thought, sort of thought, so, thought socialism was fairness and sharing and taking on Big, big, powerful interest in bringing down global corporatism. And the only way to confront the titans is if the people band together against them. One thing that's happened to me as I've kind of moved away from this highly rational perspective that hmm. it seems doesn't play out that way in practice is by yielding involuntarily entirely to uh, and uh, I hesitate to use the word irrational because it's sort of almost a der- it's a derisory term. Super rational. Super rational position. <laughs> that <What>? when <laughs> <laughs> there's something changes, uh, does it, Tucker? When you go from like, oh, I get it, yeah, Jesus is like sort of a representative of that we can all be sort of a bit like God, and we should all be kind, and what lovely values, and you can find these values in Hinduism, and you can find them everywhere. To ah. Oh, God came to earth in the figure of a man and was killed in order to atone for our sins and rose again that we may know eternal life. My rational mind 
will not accept <laughs> that proposition. And when my rational mind, as it has done, it buckles and bends and ultimately breaks, as it sort of had to, so many things have just forced it. It's, it seems like inevitable and beautiful, necessary, that be, <laughs> there is a peace that passeth all understanding. Well, understanding course. is limited. How would you dare to deem that within the purview of rational thought materialism, and that, would be, that could be measured, would be the answers to those questions? How how did that take him from the left, though? Because he said he started on the left and then this. Yes, what? yeah, yeah, and going going from like you know socialism, um, you know, so I thought socialism was a good thing, but it seems it doesn't work out that way, and now I've been dragged over this direction and Christianity. He's he's it's a little little bit brambly. Um, I've listened to this a few times, and it, and it does link into what we covered in the off-brand episode this week, um, especially this last bit, um, because Russell is having a tough time with accepting Christianity, and he he has to attempt to sort of reindoctrinate himself on a daily basis. Um, and accordingly, him having to bend and buckle and break his mind in order to force it to accept Christianity as truth makes a whole lot of sense. Um, it's really quite upsetting, um, and it is the literal process of brainwashing. You know, you must break someone down in order to build them back up in whatever form you're seeking, right? Like he is attempting yeah. to do this to himself and justifying it by claiming that, well, of course I can't, un can't understand God. That's in the super rational, you know? And it's like, oh... Oh, yeah. That's, also, that's soup, don't put super in front super of a word. Super rational. If someone starts saying almost irrational, nope. Yep. Yep. Just put in the opposite in the front. Uh. Uh. So I'm going to pull that pin that I yep. that I stuck yes. in there. Yeah. Yeah. Tucker said in mm. this interview mm -hmm. that he's been on the right his entire life. Oh mm. well, he has said so many different things. Mm. I think that's maybe more honest, um, because he's been rich his whole life. So yeah. the only thing I know for sure, he's been rich his whole fucking life because mm -hmm. he has he's made a lot of hay in other interviews and in other places where he's speaking. He's like, oh, I, I was on the left. I was because uh, he claims it, it, it. He wants a conversion story when it's convenient mm -hmm. to the right because, oh, I, I saw the light and this just makes more sense. Mm -hmm. But now, oh, he was on the right his entire life. That's. Which one's true? I'm not going to yeah. say that's a lie. Which one's true? I have my theory, but um, all I know is he's been rich the whole time. And I think that maybe that's the only real honest thing about it. Whereas, like, yeah. Russell is genuinely, like, not even necessarily genuinely. My my theory is that he was saying stuff that was the most popular and made the most sense, which happens to also be leftist or sound leftist maybe liberal and sound leftist because that's it's for the people mm. the most amount of people get them get cared for the most and get get to live lives with dignity like productive lives with dignity the most with leftist policies um so it it's really easy if, especially if you're a comedian and you want to talk for a living to talk about these things whether you call them what they are or not is different. But I think what we've learned time and time again, that if you don't call socialism socialism, you just describe it to a person like, yeah, that's the, that's what we should do. That's great. But then you say the word socialism and you're like, burn the witch. It's very different. So <laughs> Tucker to say, to say, I don't know, that, that like hit me like a lightning bolt for Tucker to say, I've been on the right my entire life because mm. he has said the opposite depending yeah. on the situation he's in because sometimes this works sometimes the conversion story works and that means he's just talking shit he's a liar he's not saying the truth that feels accurate um, yeah. <laughs> regardless of whatever else he says that part feels accurate um okay so no, so next week we get to tucker um talking about his philosophy on accepting christianity no i I mean, reason is a gift that we were born with. It, it, you know, it's it's one of the benefits of being human and not say canine. Um, so no, really, and so I think we should use reason. I think it's important to be rational, but I don't think it's the, you know, I don't think you can get to. Pe Look, he, the people I listen to are the people who aren't afraid to die because they understand something that most people don't understand. Everyone else is racked with anxiety because they know they're dying and their time is running out and they can't deal with it. So they're, you know, making money that they don't need or controlling people as a way to feel powerful or they're, 
you know, yeah. often some weird health regimen is a way to convince and himself you're never going to die. Tucker. Those Brady. people are fools. That's <laughs> obvious. The only people I really pay attention to are the ones who seem to have peace about the end of their lives. And why? Because that's a kind of wisdom that does surpass understanding. And that's the only kind worth having. And so those are the people I listen to. And that's the marker for me. Like, how anxious are you about your death? Anything that doesn't explain what happens when you die is pointless. It doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't actually mean anything. Right? Right. Um, okay, so, so all that matters is, is basically the guarantee of an afterlife of some description. Um, firstly, if that does exist, Tucker, I don't think you're going to the good place, buddy. Um, but also, I question the wisdom of only listening to people who are at peace about their eventual death. Um, firstly, you can find people of all religions who fit that description, um, including plenty of atheists who don't fear death. Um, I feel like Buddhists kind of are like... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they nail that one. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're kind of way ahead, genuinely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, usually they'll be, like, <laughs> be right back, you know? Like, the, the, um, well, yeah, we're, Christians we're, aren't on that list. The, the structure yeah. of Christianity, I feel like most of it is managing the anxiety around your mortality. That's yeah. like a huge function of religion, and you're not going to, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, and 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 also you, you can find some really mentally unwell people who don't fear death, um, including myself a few years ago before attempting to unalive myself, and believe me when I say no one should have been listening to my thoughts at that time. Um, it's a bad system, but what he's actually trying to cement is that guarantee of heaven, essentially, a sort of, well, I'm only going to listen to people who believe in this good afterlife place because that's where I'd like to be. Uh, so rather than addressing any of the other philosophical questions around Christianity, Tucker is far more interested in what he can get out of it personally because he seems nervous about that whole death thing, huh? Uh <laughs> it's really crazy to hear this person, this Pollyanna, because that also is his vibe, right? Is the Pollyanna is like, well, I don't know. What do yes, you yeah, mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a little baby Tucker Carlos, and I don't know any battle. The confused puppy of it all. Do yeah. my sentences have to? Yeah, which also, he said canine. I feel like animals are far more rational because they don't have the ability to rationalize and, like, they don't really have the capacity for cognitive dissonance. Their mm. actions are pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah. so I feel like we can learn a thing or two. Um, But, like, just, oh my God. <laughs> Okay. I mean, it's the same concept of like, oh, well, just no. Oh, my God. No Christians have ever cheated on their wives because they're Christians and no Christians fear death because they're Christians. Like that is like such a big part of the whole pageant. Mm. is managing the anxiety like and the function of religion in general the human impulse for religion baked into who we are our dna is the is managing the anxiety around the fear of death that is mm. part of how we came up with the shit in the first place yeah yeah so i'm amazed i'm amazed to hear such like empty headed people talk so much it's yeah and and i'm completely, fascinated completely I'm fascinated it feels intentionally miss all of the points like the, the like it's just whoosh the whole time you know like <laughs> yeah how often does like if you're giving a yes or no a 50 50 of like you are right or you are wrong at what point is the over under because like it, it just seems like why you're why do you pick the wrong one so much? <laughs> Every time. You know? Like, how are you so... It's like, it implies agency if you yeah. are so far off from, like, a probability of right and wrong. This has you know, to like, be... Yeah, you get to a point where you're like, this cannot just be... This has to be intentional. This can't be chance. You, well, you know? <laughs> but I, I don't know what that intention is, though. Because, like, uh, yeah, yeah. that's the thing. Is like, I don't... I mean, I... Mm, it's almost like if you were like if you wrote it, you wouldn't believe it. You know, like if, if um, it's like the guy that cheated on the TV show Press Your Luck. Like he should have lost a little bit, and then he would have gotten away with it. He mm. just won the whole game and took all the money. And ah. if he would have just lost a couple of times, he probably would have gotten away with it, and yeah. no one would have ever known that yeah. he was a smart little cheater. Like. Get a couple of, th I mean, but that's what I'm, I think that's what I'm saying is like, he's getting some things right while the, on the whole, like 
there are all these coin flips. Like if you're if your probability for even just guessing, getting something right or wrong, and if you are so far off from just a coin flip probability of getting things right or wrong, if it's a yes or no or whatever, like if you decide to go one way or the other, I don't know how much of it's instinct and I don't know how much of it is intentional. And I'm so, I think that's kind of what we're talking about, right? Is like in this project and in general is like that space in between of like, what's the agency and what's the instinct. Mm. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we have to just look at the results. Yeah. And the results are the problem. Cause yeah. I don't know how you're this wrong. <laughs> and people it's, listen to you. It's, it's pretty impressive in its own way. Um, <laughs> like they're loud enough and mm -hmm. they, they're wrong enough. Yeah. Rich enough. Flooding enough. the mm. market. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, so, so Tucker furthers this idea of his with, uh, with a personal anecdote um, and Russell accidentally fact checks him in the middle. Um, do you feel like a presence of Christ? Oh, all the time. Yeah. All the time, man. We had a quite an airline flight yesterday and um, yeah, everyone on the plane, we're on a little plane flying through the, on the outskirts of the hurricane here in Florida. And um, before, and everyone knew it was going to be, you know, a pretty memorable flight. So everyone said a prayer on the plane, including the pilot. And um, I felt complete peace the whole time. I was like, this is kind of interesting. I've never seen a plane do anything like this before. You know, I've never landed in over, you know, 50 mile an hour crosswinds. I, I didn't know a plane could behave like this. This is kind of amazing, but I, I wasn't worried at all. And I wasn't, I'm not just, not because I'm so brave, but because I really felt an assurance that no matter what happened, everything would be fine. And so anything that gives you that perspective is, a, that's the only thing worth chasing, I've decided. Because uh, I used to drink a lot on planes. I just get absolutely hammered so I wouldn't think about it. But no oh, matter God. how drunk I was, I mean, I had plane flights oh, where no. really I had to get off in a wheelchair. I could barely walk because I you know, drank a quart of vodka. <laughs> Actually no. a wheelchair. Well, I never got a wheelchair, but I needed one. I'd like bounce <laughs> oh. off the seats and then, I'm, yeah, like so drunk I couldn't talk. And even that didn't really work. Oh, I bet you talked. You know what I mean? No matter how drunk <laughs> you are, as long as you're conscious, you can still be afraid. But when you have a deeper piece, yeah, I mean, this plane yesterday was, it came in sideways into the runway. I don't know how he landed the thing. Whoa. And But it wasn't scary. It was like interesting. I was looking out the window. I was like, well, this is kind of amazing. I don't think he can land like this, can he? And he did. And I was excited, but I was never panicked. And so whatever that is that gives you that assurance, what else is worth chasing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you just get back on drugs. It's a lot easier <laughs> to get high all the time. Oh. I feel like drugs is the thing that you're looking for, and you're not going to find anything else that can top drugs really crazy lots of hard drugs <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> seems like a struggle um so for, for context they just want to get high they really do they really <laughs> really do um for context this was recorded at the tail end of september so september 27th i, I believe uh backstage at the second live event tucker did featuring russell and john rich um it was in sunrise florida which is uh, right at the tip of the hanging dong that is florida um not far from fort lauderdale uh, lauderdale sorry um it got pretty windy there for sure um it was however hundreds of miles from the actual hurricane's path um i've no doubt it was pretty scary in the moment probably but um you know also, when it comes down to it, like, yeah, you had some turbulence, you know, if it hadn't been safe to land, you wouldn't have landed there, or your flight would have been cancelled, you know, like, the, you've gotten pretty good at that sort of stuff these days, generally speaking, um, but, uh, but yeah. Well, yeah, um, there's elation anytime you are in peril and then not in peril. That's like how mm. brains work. That's how roller Prayer coasters can work. Be, it, that's exactly what I was like. Listen, man, I'm thinking to, like I'm like Russell because the thing is, is like Russell's like, well, I I spaz get me really high every fucking morning, and this Christianity shit is giving me a hit once a month max. I gotta up the ante here, mm. which is also how cults start. Cults focus on the like the um the spiritual experience part of religion, and don't and then throw the rest away and that's mm. how they get people so committed because like your actual body gets addicted to that like that the rush and the feeling yeah. of like the presence of 
of the cult leader and listen, you know, like it's, there's this whole kind of like physiological experience. Um, and he's not getting it from Christianity. And it's really funny that he thinks he can just like skip to another religion and get the same thing. Like, no, you, this isn't how it works. Yeah. Like they're just, they just want to get high. Yeah. Yeah. Which is profoundly human. It's such a yes. human impulse. Yeah. Like, I, uh, I wonder if that's how Tucker feels when he looks at all his, his bank account. You're just like, yeah, that feels great. Like that's maybe that's part of it. Maybe that's like maybe. part of the rich brain rot, right? Is like you just get to see, like at this point, it's not like I don't have to, I don't have I don't need anyone to tell me I'm important. I don't need to do anything in the world that is valuable that people or not, and that people like tell me is important. I can just look at my bank account and know I'm important by itself because of all the money i have i wonder if that's part of it maybe maybe i hope it's not i, ho I hope the actual thing is like every time he looks at his bank balance go up he's like <sighs> but you know but 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 we we, we may never know um <laughs> like oh, he's sad dear. what is that just ambivalent almost just like yeah more money i guess you know like because these people are, oh. are constantly chasing the things that you know the community and and all of the th you know all of the other things you know they and they're chasing highs and they're chasing all of these other things that they just can't get in their isolated rich white little world i'm sure that's part uh, of it but also like mm. he's not on tv anymore he's got a he's got to hustle a lot harder for the same to maintain his standard of living that's mm. the other thing that like these two dudes are not on the come up these are the mighty who have fallen and so they're both commiserating on how hard it is to still feel as the most important boy while not mm. really being the most important boy anymore yeah 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 it's true it's true and and russell's trying to kind of he, he's trying to have he's trying to have a come up of of the alt right you know he's, he's trying to find his way up a different mountain um you know and whereas tucker Their movies are never going to be that good dog no, you're not going to get there nope. no oh nope. god i wonder how long it'll be before we see uh russell in a daily wire movie um oh, don't threaten me with a good time <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, next, uh, Tucker tells us what evil looks like. Well, I think it's important to just say what the characteristics of evil are, and then we can make a judgment about what we're seeing. Because I often don't know, you know, even <laughs> people I support or like, or sometimes I feel like they're being used for evil purposes. I have often felt in my life that I have been used for evil purposes. I have been a vehicle for evil. I know that I have been. I don't want to be. I'm sure I will be again. But it's important what? to kind of take the individuals out of it and just Why? ask, like, what does evil look like? Well, evil look is chaos is one sign of it. Always. God brings order. He brought it out of chaos when he created the world. So chaos, filth, craziness, you know, m disorganization, people being alienated from themselves or their environment, all of that. You know, those are all signs of evil. Violence, violence. Mm. Anything that drives people from each other, that divides relationships, that breaks apart families, I think we can say unequivocally that's evil. And so I think it's important, as Jesus said, you judge the tree by its fruit. You know, oh, it's an apple tree. Well, why are there lemons growing on it? No, it's a lemon tree. I don't care what you call it. I don't care. I'm actually, I've totally lost interest in what people say, because as someone who uses words for a living, I know how deceptive they can be. So I don't really care what anybody says. My dogs really don't care what I say. It. They know me very well just by watching what I do. And and that's how I seek to understand other people and whether something is good or bad, evil or virtuous. What is the effect? This dude has a really weird relationship with his dogs. Like, he's got a weird obsession about it. It's, it's strange to me. Um, well, he doesn't have kids. And everyone he talks to has kids. So he still needs to have some I thought he does have prop. kids. Or wait, think, does he? Right? I think, I think so. I guess who he's, whoever yeah. is in his, like, he talks about, I think, yeah, you're absolutely right. But, like, he talks about his, like, dogs because his kids aren't home anymore. Right, yeah, you know, yeah. I, it's I, a I different. Don't know, I don't know how often he sees his kids. I think that's a surrogate different question. Surrogate prop. Yeah, which is, I'm sure they're adults. I'm sure that they're that's normal. But, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. he doesn't have, I'm saying, like, he doesn't have, like, children in the home to talk about. So he needs a prop. Yes, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he so, thinks um, that dogs are a reasonable yeah exchange gonna gonna use my dogs um yeah anyway like, weird. 
ju judging things by their effects, right? Not a bad way to measure, thing measure things, for sure. Um, if I were to apply that to Tucker, I would say he spent his entire career inspiring people to alienation, chaos, division, hatred, and violence. Um, the man's been race-baiting on camera for 30 years now, and, and this Trump guy they all seem to love is also doing all of those things he just listed as evil, especially the breaking apart of families. Like, I know for a fact that's something Trump has been incredibly effective at in America, both literally at the border and politically separating families down ideological lines. Um, you know, but by their fruits shall ye know them, and uh, these people's fruit is rotten to the core. Um, oh, and don't think I missed the little dig against trans people in the guise of fruit trees, uh, of course. Yeah, apparently it's, it's evil to call a lemon tree an apple tree. Um, dumb analogy, but that's what he was trying to do. Um, boy, oh boy. Yeah, bad analogy. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <Just> what? <laughs> I can see those lemons on that trip. Well, okay, buddy. Okay. Also, what he said at the beginning, he's like, mm. I've been a vehicle for evil. I've been used for evil. I've been a vehicle for evil. What a fun way to not take accountability for any of your actions. Isn't I've been it just used the, as the, a vehicle for evil? The thing is, like, I can see that perspective of like, oh, I worked for Fox, you know, this big fucking corporation, and everything else. Okay, fine. Mm. Why are you why what ish? Why why are you then sure that you are going to be a vehicle for evil again? I'm like, you're 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 your own thing now. How is that gonna happen now? I don't hmm. <laughs> you know? It's still <laughs> saying that he's right, yeah, but even using that example of like, no, no, no. There was no gun to your head to say any of the things that you did. Yeah. You allowed yourself to join into the system. No one used you as a vehicle for evil. You mm. used yourself. You were mm. doing, you, you actively engaged and participated. But what a fun way to never have to be accountable for your actions. Is I was, which yep. I'd, I'd use that as an, as an instructive example for anyone that's like, I was, the devil made me do it. I was possessed or I even just like, oh, I did something evil because of the devil or a demon or whatever. Okay. What? No. <laughs> it's it's a great get out of jail free card. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And and speaking of lacking accountability, um, I mentioned he'd come back to elaborating on Jim Baker and all that stuff. So so here it is, um, with another anecdote. My point earlier was there's something incredibly dangerous about standing up and saying, You want to know what a Christian looks like? Look at me. And I'm afraid of that. I'm so afraid of that. Why? One of the reasons that I have a lot of trouble going to church is every, you know, all these Christian leaders are so flawed and so obviously fake. I can't deal with it. It freaks me out. Why is that? Because they're all under spiritual attack. That's why. They're under spiritual attack. Yes, they are. Everyone's like, well, why all these you know, Christian ministers, you know, famous Christian ministers have freaky sex lives? Well, why do you think? Because they're under spiritual attack. By the way, if they were working as house painters, they'd probably be happily married. But the second they stand up and say, I'm running your church, oh. you know, they're under spiritual attack. These <laughs> pitfalls are sent their way. And I, that just freaks me out. In fact, my college roommate once told me that the second he became a minister, after his first sermon, this woman comes into his office and says, you know, I've had all these marital problems, let's do counseling. And then she hits on him. And he's wise. And he said, I'm never doing that again. Because I know now that I've held myself up as, you know, someone people can look to if they want to understand who Jesus is, I'm going to be under attack. And the purpose of those attacks will be to discredit God, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to do that. And so it just, I don't know. I'm very, ugh, it makes me, it makes me nervous. Me thinks the lady doth protest too much. Mm. Um, <laughs> I feel like the only reason you'd be that nervous in this situation is if you were the type to be easily corrupted, you know? Um, <laughs> but anyway, this makes sense with the with the Jim Baker of it all. You know, it's, it's not that Jim Baker is evil or anything, it's that he succumbed to spiritual attacks. It's not his fault he's a corrupt, fraudulent sex pest, it's the spiritual attacks! And Tucker fears that he too would not be able to stand up to those spiritual attacks, and boy does that tell me all I need to know. Right. Yeah, it's not the money and the power that's corrupting you. It's <laughs> right? Satan. It's the devil. Yep. Spiritual attacks because you're standing up for God. That's what it is. It's not. Uh, not the I power. mean, he's listened to what they've said. That's <laughs> that's that's claim has been made. So then, mm -hmm. also, but then, why is Jim Baker bad? He should be better because of what Russell said about God loves all the broken 
you know, imperfect ones, right? Yes, yeah, they they seem to both have two pretty different conceptions of what Christianity is, <laughs> fundamentally. <laughs> well, I don't think, I mean, if Russell agrees with him, then Russell just doesn't agree with himself. Like, wh wait, what? Like, this, well, I well, is... well. I, I mean, Russell might be agreeing with him in the moment, but whether yeah. he actually believes it or not is a, is a different, um, different question. Because it feels Heaven like Tuck... you stay consistent in one conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's it seems harder the, the, than I would think it to be, but uh, Russell really struggles. Um, so does Tucker. Actually, <laughs> these are these are two incredibly inconsistent men. Um, I think I'm annoyed at how little they struggle. They seem like just, they're yeah. cruising. They are yeah. just having a, a gay old time, just yeah. like floating down a lazy river, and I hate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mai Tai and the little thing, you know, it's just, yeah, yeah, no, completely. Uh, it, it's um, it it's somewhat baffling how easy it is for them to, to and, and, to, to contradict themselves just constantly you know just like yeah this is fine i'm just vibing i'm just vibing with it oh we're gonna go over here now all right i'll vibe with that too okay okay um so from here russell uh pulls out um a stupid book written by a preacher um and within that book is a quote from 1984 which russell then begins to read and then you're like this then right. this is um like a passage out of 1984 but like and it, the lead into it's pretty nice uh, p only power for the sake of power is expressed when man usurps the prerogatives of god orwell has his uh, the character o'brien declaring a noted passage power is inflicting pain and humiliation power is in tearing human minds to pieces and putting them together again in new shapes of your own choosing do you begin to see then what kind of world we are creating is the exact opposite of the stupid hedonistic utopias that the old reformers imagined a world of fear and treachery and torment a world of trampling and being trampled on a world which will grow not less but more merciless as it refines itself yes progress in our world will be progress towards more pain already we are breaking down the habits of thought which have survived from before the revolution we have cut the links between child and parent between man and man between man and woman no one dares trust a wife or a child or a friend any longer but in the future there will be no wives no friends children will be taken from their mothers at birth as one takes eggs from a hen the sex instinct will be eradicated procreation will be an annual formality like the renewal of a ration card there will be no loyalty except loyalty toward the party there will be no love except the love of big brother there will be no art no literature no science when we are in, when we are omnipotent we shall have no more need of science there will be no distinction between beauty and ugliness who there wrote will, this oh well I just, there will be no curiosity, no employment of the process of life. All competing pleasures will be destroyed. But always, do not forget this, Winston, always there will be the intoxication of power, constantly increasing and constantly growing subtler. Always, at every moment, there will be the thrill of victory, the sensation of trampling on the enemy who is helpless. If you want a picture of the future, and now the famous bit, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. So that's from 1984, you know, which I've read, uh, obviously. Yeah. Mm. I don't remember mm. How beautifully written that is! How perfect that is! Yeah, for for anyone listening and not watching, uh, if you've ever seen the face of the kid in the class who's not done the homework or not done the reading, that's the look on Tucker's face for the last minute or so. Um, and like, I I don't think he's read this book. Um, what gave it away was the look of surprise when he asked, "Who wrote this? Like, this is fantastic! Holy shit!" And well, yeah. Um, and it's a it's a pretty recognizable passage, you know, as well. Like, it's it's a pretty famous little section, you know. I, I haven't read 1984 since I was like 18, and I was like, ah, vaguely, yeah, I remember this bit. Um, so you know, I I I would think I have I have a theory that he's he's he knows lots of things about Orwell, um, which we'll get to in a second, and he knows like little bits and quotes and things, but I don't think he's ever actually engaged with the text. Well, he knows uh, he does he knows memes. And generally, right. like, here's the thing. He mm. probably did read the book. Everyone that my dad's age, like it was a standard, like that was standard reading in education in this country, and I'm sure in his little fucking private school, whatever, that he read the whole book when he was a teenager. Mm which has very little to do with Tucker. Like the amount of space, like he's got it. Listen, <laughs> he's got to keep a lot of space in his brain for whatever is happening now. So yeah. he's, he's, he's Marie condoing like a motherfucker in his brain mm. all the time. I don't care if he read the book or not. You don't act like it. I don't give a shit. 
if you read it, you don't act like you read it. Yeah. So it doesn't, that's, that's again, it's a technicality. It's like, oh, well, technically I did read it. Oh, okay, then act like it. Because nothing that you say or do lets me know that you took them or you read the whole thing and you don't understand it. Like you or you didn't get the message. You got a different message. So like, well, well, I don't speaking, give a shit if you've read it or not. <laughs> he doesn't act like it. Speaking of the message that they get from it, like Tucker is about to regurgitate some meme stuff from 1984, um, as well as some fact stuff ish. Um, but then we get to uh, to what they think the meaning of it is and essentially what it comes down to is rewriting some history and fitting it to their narrative out of context but that yeah. was written almost 80 years ago and that is that's just so perfect i mean what a that's prophetic what is amazing is of course it was largely a commentary on what he was aware of in, in the emergence of soviet communism but what i didn't imagine, but also post-war britain he was writing that in post-war britain that social yeah. democracy yes. would tend towards yes. totalitarianism yes. so that's everyone always says Oh, that's incredible. I forgot how powerful. I got to reread that. I love Orwell, and I'm embarrassed I didn't recognize that passage. But everyone, you know, he was radicalized during the Spanish mm. Civil War mm. when he was almost murdered um, by the Republicans for whom he was fighting the Poom. And then he became this great critic of Stalinism. But that was written after his country defeated fascism. Wow. And I'm not convinced that that was written about the Soviet Union. I think he saw what the West was becoming, because that's a description of what the West is becoming right now. I mean, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Perhaps then, you know, given that there was a sort of a resurgence of a, there was a labor movement in the UK, of course, after yes. the, war, the establishment of the NHS and BBC and many beautiful, what I once cherished institutions yes. of social care in my country. But perhaps he, you're saying he sort of prophesied that the infusion of state totalitarianism, even under the guises of aid and health, yes. and cultural artifacts, will lead to the severance of these sacred bonds and ties. Well, yeah, because the cafeteria scene, there's a famous cafeteria scene in 1984, Winston and Julia are having lunch. And it was, mo he worked at BBC, of course, Orwell worked at BBC during the war. And that apparently that scene was modeled on the BBC cafeteria and not on, you know, Lubyanka prison. <laughs> There's a guy. Anyway, it's just he captures it's the it's the distortion of the Anglo world of which he was, you know, mm. a product, of course, um, into something totalitarian that he really gets at there i mean he was not an expert on the slavic peoples he was an expert on the anglo peoples yeah. and wrote about about the english your people our people more more beautifully than anyone ever in my opinion but he saw where they were headed i think Mm hmm. So Orwell was warning against the evils of socialism in the uk was he um it amazes me that Tucker can bring up Orwell's experience in the Spanish Civil War and still pretend that this is the conclusion. Uh, it was during that war that Orwell was radicalized against totalitarianism, against Stalin, and against propaganda. Um, Orwell specifically joined a socialist faction allied to the party of Marxist unification during that fight. Um, and how about a quote from the man itself? Every line of serious work that I have written since 1936 has been written directly or indirectly against totalitarianism and for democratic socialism as I understand it. Unquote. Uh, <laughs> and here these two nitwits are trying to claim that Orwell was warning against the evils of socialism when it goes too far. And even, even like a sophomore reading of 1984 makes it abundantly clear that Ingsoc, the party, is not, it's not socialist. It's very specifically not those things, and that's part of the problem. Yeah, looks a lot like capitalism. Looks a lot like oligarchy. Yeah. Yep. And also, a lot of things have happened between now and when that book was written. That just, just. <laughs> he's doing the same thing that he was doing with feudalism. He knows just enough. That's what I'm saying. Is like he knows the memes. He knows he knows the conservative memes that he can mm. use, and he doesn't need to know more because he just has those nuggets so that he can take it out of context and use them for the point that he's trying to make. Even if it doesn't really work, it sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Mm, like he's, mm -hmm. it's, he, yeah, cause like, I don't care if you fucking read the book. I don't care what you know, you're not taking the right, like you're not taking the lesson away that was intended or like, you're not, you're not getting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You know, I don't. The, you could. You could have read it a hundred times. If this is how you're acting when information is presented to you, then you didn't get the lesson. 
Yes, yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't trust Tucker to read anything and take away the correct reading of it. Um, you know, and, and this is very much supposed to be, you know, totalitarianism taken to the, the most extreme degree, you know, in this dystopian thing. Um, also, I'm, I'm not sure about the cafeteria scene that Tucker's possibly misremembering, um, but the torture chamber room, uh, room 101, was named after a conference room at BBC headquarters where Orwell had to sit through numerous tedious meetings, apparently. It was, you know, a little inside joke that he threw Cheeky. in there. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. <laughs> Richard yeah. Cheeky, who'd have thunk it? Yeah, yeah it, it's it's not. Oh, this is about the BBC, like fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, now a little anecdote from Russell, because that is where we are now. Yeah, and it is about evil, isn't it? And you can see why the sort of the sense of evil is so continually beneath it, and sometimes the symptoms become so. Sort of Do you feel it? Do you feel? That these are, I mean, do you feel evil? Recently, I felt like <laughs> someone like sent a message to me, someone that I was sort of friends with, a kind of intellectual bohemian person I used to sort of do content and stuff with who's out of that whole beatnik scene and like doing um, ayahuasca and that aspect of sort of culture. <laughs> anyway, I'm disgusted by what you've become. He sent me like this message full of invective and loathing. And I thought like, wow, like what? And, and I saw for a moment. What does he say you become? Well, I guess like a Christian, like a person. <laughs> like, like, so like you're trying to start wars and enslave people? But this is a person Christians who uses this sort of like intellectual kind it's of... It's so crazy. Okay, the guy who is against killing, who's for personal autonomy, he's not the problem. And if you think he is the problem, listen to yourself. Pause, listen to yourself. What are you so mad about? The guy's trying to stop a war. Why does that make you angry? Maybe you're serving the wrong master, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> what? Okay, wait. That was also not what was what. What was the stopping the war? Th okay. Well, he he's, he's saying that Russell is you know just a guy trying to stop a war and and a Christian and and not in fact an an alt right propaganda spewing conspiracy theorist who lies to his audience for money and appears to have committed many many crimes against women, um, which I imagine is what the, uh, the 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 message towards Russell was getting at. Um, you know, this is why I you know I dislike you now um, this person he used to work with. I would love to know who it was from and uh, and uh, to be able to actually see the thing in full because I'm. I'm willing to bet it wasn't, I hate you because you're a Christian now. I don't think that would have been the message, you know? No, I don't think so. That's mm. the thing. Mm. Just because you read it does not mean you understand it. Like, no, no. <laughs> I need you to reflect that you, I need to reflect your reading comprehension in your, in your actions. Like, yep. I, I need to yep. see it. Yeah, um, it's some A plus rationalizing though. Um, you know, like, oh, this person must hate me because I'm a Christian. Yeah, keep telling yourself that, buddy. Uh, you know, like whatever, whatever hole of denial you need to crawl into. Um, whew, keeps getting okay. deeper. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, anyway, this whole debacle ends the only way it was ever going to, and that is with a prayer. I think that is one of the conclusions we could successfully draw. Tucker, thank you for breaking bread. We could end on a prayer if you're <laughs> I would love it. All right. Will I do it? No, you of do course. It? Come on. You're Russell Brand. Please. I'm Russell Brand now. That's who I've become. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this conversation and for this opportunity for us to uh, be together. And I'm very Can mindful of the edict that those that pray on street corners and praying and showing off is something I have to be aware of. I've been a right show off, Lord. Please allow me to just... Be willing and happy and content to, with the glory that is yours, to be a servant in your name, a servant among servants. Thank you for the gift of Tucker Carlson and the gift of his conversation and for the opportunity to explore these ideas together. Thanks for everyone that's working on the show tonight. And thank you for that pilot's grace that allowed him to land sized ways. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Like does he think that like referencing the part in the Bible about praying in private while praying on camera sort of like cancels it out? Like, oh, it's, it's fine. As long as I mention it, it's fine. I like, I found a loophole. It's, it's fine. Isn't it? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Man, think about if you had the confidence of a like listener, go with me. You hmm. had the confidence of a rich, like a filthy, rich, famous white guy. Hmm. Just what a fucking breeze life would be it's incredible well it, it it was only two days after this you know after, after bringing this up in this on-camera prayer that he was then on a stage praying next to jordan peterson yeah you know 
Um, yep. <laughs> You're absolutely right. So, uh, I just, I'm, I can't fathom being that unshameful. Like, mm. being shamed for things that you don't deserve, you know, and like be feeling guilt about things that you don't deserve, and then get that that's a loaded, um, you know, like a caveat, right? But like, just cruising with no shame when you a hundred percent deserve it you should be embarrassed adult mm. you should be ashamed of yourself for comporting yourself this way mm. in the world and then publishing it yeah they should yeah. be embarrassed and they're not and i don't understand it i don't understand how like yep yeah. saying yeah. things that are so <laughs> wrong is just like groovy for you uh, that's incredible to me yeah no me well well this is it like when you when you are a person who feels shame it is difficult to countenance like s someone who is shameless you know <laughs> you know it's it's very it it's, sure it's, is it's a real struggle because yeah and and especially when it comes to, like being wrong about stuff because both you and i hate that <laughs> you know that's that's a feeling that that you know i don't hate it uh, when uh, i find out the thing and then i get to be corrected and i know better it's tight I love sure. it. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. great. I've talked about this a lot. I think Learning. celebrate, celebrate, like that feeling when something is like when you get new information that you didn't have, mm -hmm. it's awesome to know like the things you did not know before. No, I do feel I, like that's my feeling. That's how I feel. That's my response in the world. And I, like genuinely, that's how I'm not just talking here. That's genuinely how I feel. I feel relief when I have more information where I had a dearth previously. I think that's fucking awesome. And you do have to practice mm. not feeling defensive and throwing a wall up whenever like maybe it's just either maybe it's not exactly what you need to know mm. but it's something different and there is no good fucking reason to waste your time and effort throwing a fit before you're just like oh yeah you're okay well yeah i guess i wasn't totally right like falling in love like falling in love with that like fucking feeling of like just fighting I, just, I don't i don't understand it i don't understand like i mean i guess that's what we're watching though is like two guys romanticizing the f the fart huffing that they're doing yeah yeah i i guess from from my personal perspective like obviously you know i speak from a a position of authority in this show i would hate to communicate incorrect information from this position of responsibility you know in this show right that you know like the learning experience yes but i would i would hate to convey incorrect information these yeah, two don't have that accurate feeling as possible exactly that should be the goal <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah. They, these two do not seem to share in that feeling whatsoever. No. Um, you know. There's a pl there's listen. <laughs> I feel like my death by embarrassment threshold is just different mm. because I the thing is is I don't want to be fucking embarrassed that I, like mm. I'm not embarrassed. I don't know something. I'm embarrassed when I fucking double down and insist, and then I'm wrong. <laughs> Why? D why do that mm. hmm yeah i just okay so the thing that like the, the part of the conversation that wasn't really addressed because they don't know any better and they don't care and they don't feel that shame is like christian nationalism came straight out of manifest destiny so if you and manifest destiny um like the the notion of manifest destiny is is profoundly colonial and profoundly christian that was Christianity was used in harmonious tandem with imperialism and conquering to bestow, to take the divine right of kings mm -hmm. and then just be divine right of rich guys with all the power. And you don't have to, oh, like, we're not a king. We do have all the control and we do have all the stuff, but mm. we don't, we're not kings, so it's fine. And actually God thinks it's super tight and is completely on our side. So the link between manifest destiny, it's not a link. It's like, it's, it's a fucking direct line from manifest destiny to Christian nationalism. And you cannot disavow one without disavowing the other. You can't sign off on one without the other. And what I think people don't understand is how intrinsic Christianity and the Bible and scripture was 
so, was was perfect. Was a perfect. Li- there there are parts of the Bible that were perfect little puzzle pieces to fit into the project of manifest destiny. Um, so using the Bible to rationalize and to justify your actions through either manifest destiny and or Christian nationalism is profoundly fucking wrong. Or to say that that's the Bible is the reason that the borders of your country get to exist where they do, regardless of, of the situation. Cause I can tell you for a fa- like, I can tell you honestly and completely, I know I'm right, that Jesus was not on board with that. Jesus was not on board with like conquering and taking and destroying and and wars in general. Mm. Like that's, I think that's such a crazy fucking misunderstanding with the war slash anti-war because like no one's anti-war in America. No one, as far as politics go. Mm. That's why people feel so disillusioned with like making this, making a choice with voting is because the policies Enough of the policies are virtually identical in yeah. how they end up affecting people. Yeah. And if your well, foreign yeah. policy is the same on both sides, then yeah, it doesn't feel like you have much of a choice. And that's been true for like decades at this point. Yeah, yeah, like that that's that's very much what I was feeling internally when when Tucker was saying like oh, you know, the 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 govern the people governing don't even care about, you know, the the people who who they're actually governing, you know, the the, the people in charge don't care about anyone, you know, and, and and have have almost kind of forgotten and think they're unimportant and I'm like, yeah, does fucking feel a lot like that. Yeah, it does. That 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 feeling feels true. Like what everything you're saying around it is wrong, but that feeling, yes, yes, definitely. Well, the the yeah. the purpose of a system is the product. Mm. So, what Tucker has been doing is making money for himself by terrorizing people, by being a stochastic terrorist. Mm. So he can say whatever words he wants to say. The product is what he should be held to. Period. And unfortunately, the way that quote unquote free speech, quote unquote, quote unquote, works in this country is he's not held accountable if he just is a stochastic terrorist. There has to be some kind of proof like Alex Jones, proof, like being able to prove that he could like he made money talking about Sandy Hook. So then that was that was like a, a clear like work product mm. that he was benefiting from misinformation. And when you have like, you know, when you're on Fox News. There is enough plausible deniability that you can't prove it. Yeah, you they got a le- possibly prove it. They have a legal team. You know, they 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 know what they're mm-hmm, doing. A very powerful one. Mm-hmm. And same thing with like, yeah, they're they are flying just low enough under the radar. I'm just I'm really worried that like Tucker is getting things so close to right, mm-hmm. and I'm not I'm not giving him credit. Mm. I think he's a parrot. I don't think he understands anything <laughs> except Tucker want money now. Tucker not like work, Tucker want money is the thing that's happening in his head. He mm. wants to work as little as he can for the most amount of money that he can. Mm-hmm. Um, and that impulse, honestly, can't say I blame him, but the way he does it, oh, I blame him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, that's our show, everybody. Um, if you want to support us in what we do, head to patreon.com slash onbrand. We would love to have you. Uh, if you want to get in touch, drop us an email. It's theonbrandpod at gmail.com, and we will get back to you. If you're on Facebook, there's a Facebook group of On Brand Awakening Wonders, um, full of like-minded individuals having fun conversations. And if you prefer more anonymous browsing, head over to Reddit. Uh, it's a subreddit called unbrand underscore pod. Um, and there are some lovely humans over there having wonderful discussions, too. Um, and uh, if you want to find us on socials, we're the On Brand Pod everywhere except for where we're not. Look for the logo, everybody. And personal socials, I'm at Elworth Official. Lauren is at me, dot by dot Lauren dot B. And if you click the old link in the description, Yone, you can purchase a Maganetta with uh, actual real-life gold uh, leaf around it. Um, handmade by Lauren. And um, maybe maybe take a little look around that shop in general and maybe you'll find some other cool shit, too. I'm adding stuff because it's, it's going to be Christmas time. Yeah, it's Very coming soon. up. It's coming up. Order early. Shipping is fucked up in December. Not always, but sometimes. Yeah, generally seems a good practice with this stuff as well. Um, All right, well, uh, thank you very much for sticking with us. Patrons, we'll see you Sunday for some off-brand goodness. Um, Take care of yourselves and each other. Thank you. Love you, bye. Henry Kissinger's still dead. Love you, bye. Yeah, bye.
That's not win-win-win. That's lie, 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 lie. That's propaganda, propaganda.